We're recording. Uh, uh, so whenever you want to start, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, David. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's NBAR meeting. Um, we have a full house today. I would ask that all guests or attendees that are not applicants, please mute their microphones so that we don't get a whole bunch of interference during the meeting. Uh, when we do get to your item, we will open up for public comment. Um, after the applicant has had a chance to present their their project and the board members have had a chance to ask their questions. So with that said, we'll begin today's board meeting. I would ask at any time, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to something that is not on today's agenda? Not hearing anyone comment, uh, we'll move on to agenda item number two, the agenda status report. Excuse me, uh, on the agenda, is there any um, uh, line for mitigation of issues? Uh, who is speaking? Well, this is James Brennan. I'm the HOA president for the uh, Edgewood. Okay, as indicated, when we do get to your agenda that you would like to speak on, we will allow for public comment. Please know that we are an architectural board. We only, our purview is the aesthetic and um, how, it, how it looks, the architecture uh, being used, the styles. We do not comment or we do not make policy on zoning and or uses. Okay. Thank so you. We will, we will get to your item on, again, I'd like to ask if everybody just uh, mute their microphones until such time when, when they are asked to speak. Uh, so Mr. Chair, you were on the agenda status report. So that just, is correct. just to put space with that, um, if everyone can mute themselves, I will do it for you if you, if you can't figure it out. Um, uh, thank you. Um, we have two items on today's agenda. Um, they're both ready for review. Um, I know that one in particular is, um, we'll, we'll, I think the particularities of each item we'll get, we'll discuss when we get to them. Because as you notice, there's a, there's a notation under the second item. So I think um, the planner will discuss that further, but uh, we're ready to go for with both, both items. I'm sorry, thank you, David. Moving on to item number three, the minutes from the September 24th meeting. Uh, the minutes were emailed to the members. Um, I'm hoping that you've had a chance to review those. And if so, would you like to make any amendments and so, or corrections to those minutes? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I, I apologize for interrupting you again. Um, but I, when I emailed you this morning, um, I did make a notation that, the, so the September minutes were approved at your meeting last month. Um, so the agenda is incorrect. Well, I'm sorry. So yeah. it should be the October minutes. The October minutes. So right. I wanted to include them in case they um, you needed them for today's meeting, but because they're not listed properly on the agenda, um, you can't approve them today. So um, we'll make sure to we'll um, put them on the next agenda, um, and then I guess we I think we can just move on from there. Okay, thank you, David. So as there is nothing on today's consent agenda, we will move on now to the NBAR members informational briefings has anybody had any contact with applicants planners board other board members and if so they can bring up now what they have discussed i again only hear okay again only hearing my computer uh, we will move on now to uh COVID stuff. So um, as of right now, we are still doing online meetings and we have no schedule as to in-person. Is that correct, David? So um, just to clarify, so um, the requirement right now to remain remote is that the NBAR has to um, make certain findings 
um, every 30 days. Um, so at your, I think it was your last meeting, um, you had directed staff that you wanted to remain remote and perhaps revisit it during the, um, at the beginning of the year. Um, so I have booked for next year, although there's certain logistical issues to work out with this, um, uh, the Betteravia Center, um, because it allows for more spacing. So we're preparing for that, but um, it's certainly the NBAR's prerogative um, during this emergency uh, situation um, to, to decide whether or not you want to go back to in-person meetings or to remain remote. And of course, um, just because it comes up every time we, um, we go over this at any of our hearing bodies, when we do go back um, to in-person meetings, the ability for members of the public and even applicants, I suppose, uh, to attend remotely will remain. And that's the logistical things that need to be kind of worked out. Um, so, you know, I, so I will be, uh, so the NBAR would like to continue to have their, I guess, at least a December meeting remotely. Um, I would ask that the NBAR make a motion to continue um, to hold their meetings remote. I do want to point out, um, as I said, that um, the NBAR has to make these findings every 30 days to remain remote. Um, because of the holiday schedule, so typically the NBAR would meet the fourth Friday of the month because of uh, the holiday schedule in December. What ends up happening is there's more than 30 days in between your December meeting and your, your January meeting. Um, so what we'll ask is the NBAR to schedule like a five, 10 minute special hearing just to address this issue. If it's your desire to remain remote, if you want to go back in person, that's not needed, but um, uh, that's something that I'll have Leah follow up with you on. Okay, so as far as the infrastructure you're working on now with the very better right. center, uh, we are, and it will be available for remote meeting by members and or applicants. Is that correct? Is that going to work? So um, that is, so let me just back up here. So it's one way or the other. Um, so if you want to go back in person, then you're back in person <laughs> um, for the board members. So for the applicants and for um, uh, members of the public, more specifically, um, uh, required to maintain the uh, uh, remote option. So, um, but if you decide you want to go back in person, then um, we will expect our board members to be be there. Um, otherwise, we have to post. Uh, the location of each board member if they uh, attend remotely at that point. <laughs> you mean the address? Correct. And physical it, address? Physical address, and it has to be available for any member of the public to attend at that location. At our individual locations? Correct. If 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 you decide at that my you, house, if that's where you're you're meeting from, yes. That's crazy. That is the current law. So the um, COVID, the governor suspended certain provisions of the Brown Act during this um, uh, pandemic, but uh, recently signed AB, which enables the BARs or any board members, to, boards to remain remote. Um, but then they have to go through this process of um, making findings every 30 days. Now, if you go so back, you want, to, you want to stay remote to be safe, but you have to allow people to come over to your house. So if you choose to not to remain to end the remote hearings and hold in-person meetings, then we go back to what the um, standard requirements are. So that is correct. So that is if that plays into your decision, whether or not to remain remote, <laughs> that's fine. But that's that's just I'm just telling you what how it's going to work out if you decide the board majority of the board decides to go back in person i like remote meetings can i move for remote meetings next time so i'm looking for a motion today and that just takes us to, to december meeting and we have to do it every 30 days i say move okay well said kevin. is that uh, was that steve no it's kevin oh kevin i'm sorry thank you and just a quick note, David, on the prior motion um, that was made for 30 days at the uh, October meeting, 
there was a provision that the NBAR had added about providing um, plans for in-person review by board members, members of the public to be available in the Foster Road office. I'm not sure if that's a provision that the board would like to keep in place or not. I would I'd like to add that onto my uh, motion, as well as when those become available in the office, that you contact us and tell us that they're there. So this was for, was this for color boards? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. For color and and a, a set of, um, full size set of plans. So that I will need to ask about because that, that kind of changes our submittal requirements. Um, and I don't think that this, this board really, um, I need to discuss that because that, that David, would be kind of a it, policy change. Because right now- I think it, it's, li it's written out on our, on our minutes last time if you just want to take a peek. I understand what I did requested. I, I'm just I'm just questioning whether or not that's something that um, the NBAR can request, I guess is what I'm getting I, at. So I, know, I just I was just saying that because it, it kind of described what we were asking for. Okay, I understand. So um, I will look in, I'll read those minutes and I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. Uh, so uh, is we have a motion and a second um, if we could just uh, get a, a vote on that, that would be great for the record. Yeah, I'd like to call for a vote for all those members who would like to remain um, online and do our meetings remotely. Go ahead and simplify by saying aye. Well, aye. wait a minute. Look, I have a question before we vote. How long are we talking about remaining remote? This is every 30 days. So, okay. so the time. next December meetings, all we're voting on. Right. That, that is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And I'll call for that vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Nay. Okay. Motion passes. So unanimously. The motion passes. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you very, it. Thank you, Dave. Okay. With that said, we will move on to today's standard agenda item number one var number zero zero one one eight the rice ranch valley view home models if the applicant is ready go ahead and introduce themselves for the record and begin your presentation hi uh members of uh of the board my name is jay bladder principal with hawkhauser bladder architecture and planning and here with us today is Nigel Gomersall from our office. He's the project architect and primary designer. And we also have available Chris Dufour, who is the landscape architect. Uh, we are here to present, and we have 10 of uh, our master plan model homes that we're presenting. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Gomersall, but I, I just want to emphasize that uh, we have 10 homes and of course there'll be 10 reverse models which means there'll be a total of 20 different homes as part of this uh valley view neighborhood and uh i think that's a credit to the developer it'll be a very rich neighborhood we appreciate the comments we took the majority of almost all of your comments under consideration and we look forward to showing you the final construction documents and de details which i hope you'll please with because i think they're very consistent with the preliminary approval designs as well as you know your comments, so I'm going to turn this over to Nigel from our office. Uh, there's quite a bit of drawings, and he's a large. You're breaking up, Dave. File, so hopefully we won't have any. Uh, Um, Nigel, were you the one who's going to present the plan? Uh, the value of your time. So I'll turn yeah, this over yeah, to Nigel. I was, I was the one who was going to present the plan. Jay. Okay. I'll make you the presenter for this. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to turn this over. Let me, uh, every, everyone can see the plans on the screen. Could I ask you, this got preliminary approval last time, right? It doesn't say it in the minutes. Agenda. That is okay. correct. Okay. Uh, let me just see if I can uh, hold on one second, see if I can get it even. 
larger on the screen here. Ah. Right. A bit slow. Get rid of this. All right. So I've, I've got. Yeah. So just so you understand, I've, I've got all sort of ten sets up here. That's that's obviously a lot of drawings to be able to. Uh, way through what i have is i have each of the sets open at the elevation so that i hope that's acceptable that we can just preliminarily talk to the uh elevations for each uh house type what i thought i'd do is maybe go through the comments that were brought up at the uh, uh for the preliminary approval if that's okay uh maybe as a way a way to sort of Wade into this is that acceptable that is um, fire away okay yeah so so there there were i think they were all in all there were 14 comments of which some weren't actually necessarily directly relative to any of the uh house types um there there was a comment uh comment number two was regarding landscaping. The comment was there are concerns that the coast live oak as a street tree because uh, the place, the spaces allocated for the oaks may be too small. And I believe that, I don't know whether Chris quickly wants to speak to that, but he has indicated a note on his drawings. Um, to the to the effect uh, he has specified that where the space would be too small an alternative sort of species has been uh, basically basically specified chris i don't know whether you just want to comment on that yeah thanks nigel this is chris dufour landscape architect with rm design group um so we did take heart to, to the comment um looking back at the design guidelines the the, the quercus agrifolia was listed as um, a theming tree so I didn't want to just swap it out uh, willy-nilly so what what we did instead was basically put a formulaic approach where and I, I spoke with our arborist in house and sort of came up with a, a square footage where we felt was was comfortable and so there's a note on each of the plans where that shows up it says with an asterisk that says lots with less than 30 feet diameter clear space for oak clearance shall substitute oak with the pyrus caloriana also on the list so that's kind of how we dealt with that comment thank you okay um the comment number three uh, the board prefers a smooth or semi-smooth stucco finish and just to be clear we have specified that on our on the, the material sample board that occurs on the front of all of our document sets so we 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 have uh I think I can, might be able to zoom in on this. So we have that, that note is also applied throughout the job, but on the, on, we've got a little note down here at the bottom. I don't know whether you're able to read that. Every sample board on the cover sheet said, note all stucco shall be smooth or semi-smooth finishes. Let's get back to the elevation. Uh, comment number four, uh, check high fire requirements for venting and eaves on all models. Just, just so you understand, we've revised the eave detail on the design actually to eliminate any venting via the eaves. All venting for the roofs will be via uh, O'Hagan roof vents, just to be, uh, just to be clear. Uh, so that, that, I don't know whether you need me to take you to that detail, but the detail has been adjusted that we actually eliminated the venting at the eaves. Uh, and, and we have got the required sort of fire. Uh, we, we've got a layer of uh, uh, fireboard basically in that eaves detail that would prevent that being a problem uh, for the design. Algie, you've also got uh, gable and vents? Yes, they're o they'll be O'Hagan root vents. Uh, those are roof vents, but you've got gable end vents too. You can specify those. Um, as uh, and we do, we do have sorry, we do have gable end vents as yeah. well, and some where, wherever you know, what, what we have what we have on each of our uh, we have a roof calcul calculation on each of our, our roof plan sheets uh, that, that clarifies the venting that occurs via the O'Hagan vents and via the uh, the gable end 
the yeah, just uh, to be clear, the gable end vents need to be fire fire vents too. Uh, okay, we we may need to make that clear then. Uh, yeah, we the, and, you know, there's there's many that do that. Okay. We'll 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 make sure then to incorporate that into our detail. And just so you understand, these these drawings are all in for basically if they've been submitted for first plan check. So we will have an opportunity to address any of the board's comments should they come up on the uh, on the uh, you know in, in the process of responding to any plan check comments. It's a, it'll be a plan check comment. Okay. The term is ember resistant. Yeah. Okay. Vulcan, I think. Um, yeah, they make them. Yeah. Okay, so com comment number five, you said on model A, this is model A that's up on the screen right now. You commented that you appreciated the wrought iron detailing at the front of the courtyard. Just to, just to clarify that wrought iron detail still remains on the front of the design. So that's that's what you see on the uh, on the front in front of this gable on the left side. Uh, on model C, you asked us, to, you said, consider lowering the scale and plate height of the casita element. So let me go to house C. So this is house C. This is the, this is the casita element at the, uh, on the front elevation. And just to clarify what happened there was it looked fairly tall on our last presentation. And part of the problem there was that the, uh, the plate height for the first floor was shown a lot higher than it actually is now. So what we've done is we've reduced the uh, reduced the pl the plate height uh, for the first floor level, and that served to kind of bring down the height of the casitas with it. On top of that, we reduced the scale of the kind of the top sort of setback sort of cornice element that we've got up at the top. So we have addressed that comment and brought down the height of the casitas. And I think you can see that that kind of works kind of nicely with the proportion of the uh, of the front elevation of the house. Since we're on that one, Nigel, I, what I couldn't figure out what the, the lower uh, your it's labeled uh, 94B. You just it's stucco, but what's the interface between the stone and the stucco? There's a line. It, do, you have uh, a, do you have a stone ledge or something? Uh, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I'm thinking that, but, uh, I couldn't find a detail. You've got a 15, but it doesn't go down that far. Yeah. I think we'd intend that there would, I think it would, yeah, we might need to clarify that, but it, it could be a, a kind I of don't a think house ledge or may, maybe we would just do a build out with a, uh, with a kind of a, a, a plant on wood stud that would become part of the kind of the stucco finish. Um, so the no, stucco, I think the, 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 the stone is going to be out farther than the stucco then, right? Like three inches? No, I think what we'd like to do, I, I think we need to address that detail because I don't think I want the stone to be out further than the stucco. No, no, that would be wrong. But, but like on yeah. 59, uh, what is it, A9.1, it doesn't go all the way, that detail doesn't go all the way down. It only shows the top part, which is a lot of fancy framing. You've got okay. two by 10 plates and all kinds of stuff. But I don't think I, I saw anywhere in there about how you're doing that. So maybe you want to clarify it for the guys. Building. Okay, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll address that comment. I'm, I mean, sure. I mean, I could try to go through all the details, here, but I, I, I might have trouble finding it right now. But uh, I, I'm, I kind of jumped happy into one of <laughs> I'm happy to address that comment. Just make a note. Yeah, okay. Uh, Item seven, model C, the arch needs care, careful study and execution to be a successful design element. So ju just so you understand that what we've done is we barrel, we barrel vaulted this arch actually through the design. Um, so this is, this is the front entry arch you can see on the front elevation up at the balcony level. So, I mean, we'll, we'll continue to look at that from a detail standpoint. We have got details on this particular sheet, but, uh, but I just want to clarify that that barrel vault is a continuous sort of vault through the hallway that occurs sort of behind this uh, behind this arch. So I don't how know you, whether you have it. My, my concern was how you're going to interface with the roof. Are you going to put stucco up there? I, to me, it's, it'd be a really weak element unless it's done just perfectly. And I didn't see any detail addressing it. 
so your concern was with just the tile that, that I, I mean I'm thinking it's going I'm thinking it's going to be a tile element you think that might be cumbersome in tile I don't know how you're going to do it in tile but you know uh, you just need to address it somehow I think it would be very awkward in tile I don't see how you can do segments like that on a smooth no. it, it's Plastic just a metal. metal it's just a I just don't want it to be something that people point at as a that didn't work kind of a moment <laughs> Uh, well, I don't, I don't want people to do that either. Um, <laughs> no, but you've got I mean, to, I mean, what, to... I mean, it would be an option to do it actually just out of, uh, out of, uh, metal roofing. We, we could do it that way. I mean, and then you've got a fascia that's intersecting it as well. Yeah. It's wood, I yeah. assume. So, so I your, your concern, your concern wasn't necessarily with the underside of the barrel. It was actually with the interface of the tile on the, the interface, roof. how it works with the roof and how it interfaces uh, the fascia. Because those are all details that uh, you're you going to end up with the guy with the hammer is going to have to figure it out. You don't want that. <laughs> no, no, I agree. Um, all right. Well, we'll, 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 I'll make sure to address that detail. It might, you can't, you can only get, you can only get those tiles, you know, Certain precision as you're making the arch as it's going up the hill. It's a it's an it's an an it's ellipse bending. kind of a shape you're trying to make, and it's yeah. kind of rugged sometimes. And then you've got flashing you have to worry about, and just um, yeah, yeah we may it. want we may want to consider doing that out of metal or copper, you know, and and then then we get have a proper uh, edge condition with the curved uh, fascia. So I think. I think that may be a direction to go in this particular barrel vault. However, and that you're would age do nicely. It. it would work well. Just think it through completely. Whether you want to bring it out farther, push it back farther, have it in the same plane. You know how it's going to how it all matches up in details. Because it's way up high, everybody's going to see it. And and how you flash the valley, right? So really quickly i'm just trying to summarize what we've been discussing for the last minute um, about the type c model and specifically the barrel arch that's intersecting uh, yeah, they need to review there. the details for the barrel okay. arch okay and review the details how the arch can be constructed how the fascia would intersect with it the interface between the tile and the roof and the fascia yeah, they, yeah we they need to de they need to just detail it when you detail it you kind of have to think about all that stuff okay so, thank you yeah. okay i i i don't disagree with that comment <laughs> i think we, we we may need some more clarity on the detailing of that um, i accept that comment um model uh comment on model d Model D, uh, reconsider the middle garage, maybe a deep recess to em emphasize the heavy material or use a lighter stucco color to recess the space. Uh, we've, we've removed, we've actually uh, removed the arch. We, we thought it was ending up being maybe a little too incompatible with the look of the house. So what we have done is this is this is the central garage that we're talking about here. What we have done is lightened the uh, stucco color, so that that sort of helps add a little emphasis also to the entry. But this is that kind of that recessed garage now that you uh, that you is that C? Inside. No D. Sorry, is that this D? Is D. Yeah, this is D elevation. Yes. I have a reversed one. I'm looking at. <laughs> uh, That's that's one of the ones that I kind of looked at on the face of the garage door on the face the garage face yeah the barge rafter it says it's a four by but it doesn't say how deep it is it's, so there's a four by that runs down the edge on the gable and then it comes out and it hits a two by six it's going the other way how big is the is the four by do you have any idea is it supposed to be two by six you're talking about that the header at the header at the garage no the header is another interesting thing i like what you did that's a structural right. beam that's a that's a six by twelve and then yeah. you make it two by eight walls on either side so it's a recess two inches so you're just painting that is that what you're doing painting the 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 structural header uh yeah i mean that would that would be basically staying the same color as the 
garage. That would be the same color as the garage door. Yes, it would be. So, so it's it painted. Would be, yes. And I guess I just want to know what the what the barge rafter size is. Is that it's bigger than the fascia on the side, right? Well, that's not. You're, you're talking. You're talking about what you see underneath the. You're talking about what you see underneath the. Uh, yeah. The trim that runs underneath the eaves. Well, it it's on the. It doesn't have an overhang there, as far as I can tell. It's on the face of it. It's just a four by that's applied, and then the. And then the. Um, well, look at the detail on eight. Nine. A, a nine point one. Yeah. See, it just fits tight up against the wall, and it just says it's a four by. But you you probably want to tell them what size four by that is. You're on the wrong page, I think. Right, hang on. There we go. There you go. Eight, eight, 9.1. Guy down in the bottom, in middle. Right. Let me zoom in. Sorry, hang on a minute. Yeah, I don't think you're you tell anybody. Spot, you're, you're, yeah, okay. It doesn't say yeah, what size okay. it is. And I assume that it's going to be bigger than the fascia that it hits on the side, but, but maybe not. And then there's underneath the overhang on the right side there's some there's some stucco buildup foam and i guess yep. you cut it off at the front flush is that what you intended to do let me just go back to the elevation hold on i just happened to look at that corner and kind of in detail a little bit but it confused me yeah, I mean, I, I, I know what my intent was. Yeah, the the intent was. Uh, <coughs> but this is actually this is actually the reversal, by the way, that you're seeing here. But yeah, that's the but one. The, I was yeah, so so my my thought this this would be this would be a tr this would be actually in my mind actually a foam trim. I think that we would run underneath the uh, because on this particular house, I don't. I think this guy, this is the one that, that runs the foam trim all the way around underneath the eaves. Yeah, that's detailed too um, on that last page. So I, I think what I'd do is underneath that barge, we'd incorporate a sort of a foam trim that basically then returns back to the uh, reveal. Okay. So you're, you're, that's what you're, I was getting. Yeah, and that, that, would, that, that would then be continuous around underneath the uh, eave all the way around the house. So this, this is the house that does have, there is a, I think there is a detail on one of the sheets that does show a foam. A, a basic yeah, detail, trim detail yeah, two on the page we were had that yeah so that 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 would be continuous with this plant on underneath the barge so i i think what we need to do is go into that ease detail and make sure Fix that's the detail, a depth yeah. to incorporate the mold that's yeah that's a fair enough comment okay okay but coming back to, you're, you're fine you're fine with the with the overall look at this elevation at this point in terms of the uh one other minor thing on the entrance, yeah. uh, above you walk through the to, to the entrance. You've got columns. I couldn't tell how big they were, but say they're two feet columns, and then yeah. it's dropped down up above only six inches. Wouldn't it be nicer if you match the drop down? Uh, um, see where it says two nine, uh, two, uh, two eight, eight, nine point one. Yeah, below yeah. that, it, it just drops down six inches wide. It's this little drop down. It wouldn't it be nicer if it was the width of the columns uh, on either side, uh, rather than just a thin little six inch drop? If you look at the, um, you know what I mean? Okay, Let, do you want me to go to that detail? Um, no, let's see, there's a roof, no, it's a reflected ceiling plant someplace. So, uh, let me go to the reflected. Do you want me to go to the reflected ceiling plan? Let me just do Where that. Where is that? There's so so what you're saying is you're you're seeing that the drop down is only thin on the return on the return side of it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Look at the so, look at the um, a seven point one. Okay. Let me do that.
Uh, sorry, let me go back to that. A seven point one. Yeah, you know what I'd like. To do? Yeah, see, uh, it's just a little thin guy running around. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I th I, th I think we should run that the full width of the columns. To be yeah, honest. yeah, and I think it happens on several houses. Uh, I'll I would I'd like to run that the full width of the column. So we'll yeah, we'll, we'll actually catch that. It it won't read. No, that's, that's certainly what we would. Yeah, that's certainly the intention. This drawing just the line needed an extra line needs to be out there for sure. Yeah, but like in the Ooh. section, it shows this. It shows that too that it's not. The no, point. no, no. We we want it to full width. It's got to feel like a like a solid masonry enclosure. Yeah. You know, solid enclosure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 you're right. That's a, I mean, that's a good pickup. I'd like that. I'd like that to run the width of the column. So that's yeah, that's absolutely. Good. And it's on a bunch of houses, and just when you're All looking right. up, you want to see the weight. Okay. No, we we yeah. That, that's a standard design thing we would include on any house type of thing. So that's a good pickup. We we would have picked it up at some point, but I yes, we'll pick it up right now. It's part of the line next in the middle. Okay. Not that I like to get in the weeds, but I guess I do. No, no, that's um, it's, these are good pickups. You did you did comment that uh, item nine model D on this same house the the entry tower was a little tall. So just so you understand, this is also being brought down quite a bit in a sense with the pl the plate height was again a little higher uh, first time around. So in bringing that down, I, I think it's helped with the overall proportion of that tower. Now it doesn't look kind of. Uh, I think it's a. I think it's a nice, handsome. You know, it's a clean shape. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, I like the way this elevation proportions out. So I'm, I mean, I'm kind of, I mean. In, Terms of, I think the overall composition of the uh, of the front elevation, we're 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 happy with it. Uh, I just I just need to do some uh, more extensive detailed coordination. To be, it's, uh, uh, I, I guess I shouldn't be admitting to that on screen. But. No, no. You're just thinking. On uh, item ten on model E. Uh, let me just go to oops sorry hang on model e you had commented there is a lot of headroom above the garage doors reconsider the proportions here uh again the 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 this is how i see that the, again the plate height is being brought down so i think again that's kind of helped with the uh with the uh the head there was a lot that I previously there was a lot of headroom above the uh a lot above the garage doors and that's been kind of significantly reduced so I hope you know I, and again I, this is yeah <laughs> sorry you were going to say oh uh nothing I said I, I I don't remember what it looked like but I think this looks this looks proportion correct I could pull up. The, it no, was. Wanna, it was. It was wanna. considerably higher. I think it was a good foot and a half higher than this, and it did look a little disproportionate. Now that we've reduced that plate height, I think it just helps a great deal with that overall appearance. I think it's good. You wrote on um, for the same model. The roof pitch could drop, and the parapet feels more natural in the lighter color uh um just just i i didn't actually change i didn't change the roof pitch just to be clear because actually when i when i i did tr we did try that out it actually made the gable look very kind of uh disproportionate to be quite it, it just looked it just looked incorrect at a lesser pitch to be quite to be quite honest um and plus when we when we because we've lowered the plate height um you know i didn't it, i didn't see the merit in actually changing the roof pitch so i just i just want to be clear that uh, mainly because of the proportions of some of the elements on the actual house design we did leave that roof pitch you know pretty much similar to the other houses um, I, I think it looks right. and i don't think i, I think sure it looks fine wasn't for another house I'm I don't see the. Uh, it did say it did say for house. Yeah, well, it did say for house E for model E. It was comment eleven. Because I don't see the. Uh, anyway, it looks good to me. Uh, 
model H. Uh, H, this was model H. Uh, your comment. Uh, you said a model H, sorry, nice job with the belly band, in, in, including stairs on the lower tower element could simplify roofing. Consider a larger window on the tower element front. Uh, so we have dropped the height. The, again, some of the plate heights, the, the height of the tower element has actually dropped uh, quite a bit. Um, what we did do, we we did enlarge the uh, window element. But the, here's here's the thing. And we talked about at one point, I think, dropping this tower element so you would tie in the tower roof into the main roof. But actually what that kind of did was it sort of killed the appearance of the uh, tower element a little bit. So I think I think the reduction in the kind of the height of that tower as a result of bringing down the plate heights, I think the enlargement of the window on the tower element, again, I think you can sort I, of I think see. That's I a, think that's a handsome, the, the tower yeah, element, I, I think, handsome shape. Yeah, and I kind of, I, I mean, I like the way this house looks and I like the fact that it's actually proud of the, uh, but it's proud of the main roof element. Uh, I, th I think it kind of helps actually a little bit in terms of even how it would be constructed. So. You know that upper element, the little before you get to the fascia, it works best on this one. It, it, you've used it on the other casitas, I think. It doesn't work as yeah. well as it does on this one. And also remember to yeah. do the detail down on the bottom with the stucco coming out farther yeah. than the Stone. Yeah, I think when we do that, I'll I'll address that detail. I, I'd like to address that detail because I do yeah. I do want to make sure I, I do not want the, I don't want the stone to be proud for sure. Because you know what'll happen. Yeah, uh, the lower stucco element. So we'll we'll make sure that we address that. Um model G, you said the uh let me pull up G. Did I skip? Oh, I guess it's in out of order. Uh, so model G, we had, you wanted us to just address the color of the uh, this kind of entry gable feature, and we did that. So we we significantly it was kind of like a, uh, a, a for some reason it came out a little bit like a kind of a bright a super bright yellow, I think, on the previous design. So what we've done is sort of. Uh, in a sense, kind of tone that down a little bit. And I got to be quite honest, I don't know whether this I even quite does total justice to the color for some reason, there's a little. There's something else going on on this one. <laughs> See where the grade area is, a triangle, um, kind of right square in the middle of that elevation? Uh, this here, actually you're saying here. shadow, right. That is a stucco that's uh, in the same plane as the face of that. Uh, yeah, it sh it shouldn't be actually. What actually this actually does come proud of the face, so I'm not quite sure why it's in shadow. And I, I, I don't think there was a wall put there in the model, so that's a shadow but, showing all the way back to the other. You uh, know what? I think I think all it is is a model mistake, to be quite honest, because this actually is part of this gable right. face dying into that roof element. So I'm not right. quite sure why it's so, done that. But uh, right. so in addition to that, you need to to take a look at how that roof, the sloped roof comes up, what you're planning on doing. Um, yeah, yeah. That, because yeah, you're yeah, gonna, this, if you color is, that, that color, you're, it's also gonna show that shape. So ex, uh, explore that if that's the shape you want or how you're gonna detail Yeah, what well, there, there would be, there would be the typical sort of tile overhang detail on this side. So this would be a typical sort of uh, yeah. verge detail. I think what's happened is the model has just not picked that up for some reason. So I mean, I will, I do need to check. I, I do don't think they put that. a wall there above the roof. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think they did either. So they're it's uh, showing a shadow. It's, it's kind of weird because I checked this. I'm actually surprised it's not there because I think it was there at one point. So I don't know quite what's happened in the model, but uh, I will. Uh, yeah, it, it it should be infilled, and it would be the same coloration as the uh, as the gable front. Yeah, and it's going to uh, add so a lot more that, to it to so evaluate. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a just a drawing correction. I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, uh, so you asked on uh, the last item was with regards to the lighting. 
And just to be clear on the lighting, we've got a, we have got this dark sky fixture now specified. Um, and we did specify an alternate, an alternate fixture as well, which was, so we have two fixtures as the potential for the, uh, and, and they are both dark sky fixtures, just to be clear. So I don't know whether you have any additional concerns about the fixtures that are shown now on the drawings, but these were corrected versions. I think they look good. Okay, good. Yeah, as long as they're dark sky compliant. Yeah, they are. They are dark sky. This set this clarifies dark sky here, and I think it says dark sky on the other one as well. So. Uh, you know, and I discussed that with the electrical engineer just to be sure we met all requirements for uh, for the exterior lighting. So I, I I don't know whether you want me to go into any more detail on any of these. Uh, so that that take that that was the comments from the last meeting. I mean, a lot of these houses are consistent with that. We haven't basically. Uh, you know, other than to address a lot of these comments and to tighten up the drawings from a, uh, you know, a construction documentation standpoint, underneath understanding there might still need to be a little more tightening on some details. Um, Nigel, there to, was to one other. I can't, I can't f figure out where. There's normally you, on your entrances you have square columns, but on one of them, mm -hmm. and it's a smaller one. It's an L shape, but it looks like a square column from the front, but it isn't. Which which model uh, is that? Oh boy, you're testing me now. Um, it's, it's a it's a littler house, I think. It's a one story, I think. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder. You know what it might have been? It could be this. It was at this house J potentially. Uh, let me have a look. I think yeah. That's I it. think this is where it is. Yeah. So and, let, can I, just, I, I actually I, I should I should I did fail to explain. So house J that needs some work on the entry. <laughs> yeah. Let, uh, let me explain house J. Okay. House J was a was not part of the previous package that we submitted for the preliminary review. What this was was this is a house plan that uh, the owner wanted to accommodate from a. Uh, previously approved house for the Grove development rice ranch. And um, so what we what we've done is we've been we've been taking this house in the attempt to uh, you know adapt it to basically fit in with the rest of the designs. Uh, so actually what I think you're right. What I'd like to do is make sure these columns actually pick up on uh, pick up on that, you know, what we've done is sort of fought to basically make this compatible with the other houses in the design. It's a, it's a slightly smaller house than uh, the other houses. Um, I don't think you're up to the design money. standard yet of your other houses on this. The entry is kind of tall and skinny and, and narrow and there's no, there's, and the, and the width of the, the width of the arches going in is skinny, thin, uh, you know, just do your magic. It needs to be reviewed. I, 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 you know what? I'd like to. Uh, I appreciate that comment. Okay. I will do that. Uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, obviously, from a detail standpoint, from an arrangement of the house, we're not going to change that. This is going to be a matter of yeah. Just I'd like to. I'd like to have another opportunity to just sort of tighten up the elevations a little bit. I mean, what we did do was at least try to go through this to try to make sure that we got the. Uh, Features to be sort of somewhat compatible with the uh, with the other houses, but we'll we'll and, and uh, like the garage doesn't it isn't proportioned right yet. The you know there's the, okay. the door uh, seems short. The or all right. well, well, I mean it seems if, tall. if you'll allow if you'll allow us to continue <laughs> okay. on that exercise, we don't disagree that we'll kind of we'll kind of push it. Uh, okay, we'll push it one step further, I guess. One or two. Um, but at least we felt like this house overall was not, it certainly was not incompatible with the, uh, largely with the other houses that we were proposing. But I, I just wanted to clarify, sorry, that this was, this was an additional house of the package. It was, it was previously approved, uh, just to be clear from a, from an architectural standpoint. But I think what we need to do is just kind of, 
we'll rein it in a little more to make sure that it's compatible. It needs to be more compatible with the other houses and yeah. kind of okay. same okay. design level. And I should probably just no, clarify I... as well, there was a house F1 that was <laughs> submitted and and I just just so everyone understands the the F1 house was a uh, it was a reduced version of the of the F house and actually the the so the front elevation basically remained intact. I just want to make sure that I clarify that. What we actually did for the F1 house was uh, we we sucked out a lot of the side elevation basically. So basically brought the as it were kind of sucked in the front of the back elevations and and reduce the side elevation uh, that didn't have any sort of basically any detrimental effect on the design and actually what we've done now for the plan check submittal is we've integrated that as basically being an alternate version of the uh, of the F house just so you understand um, but I just want to clarify that that house has not resulted in any change to the front and the back elevation it's merely shrunk the side elevation uh, I mean, I mean, in the process, I will say I, that did slightly change the roof design, but but we we kept the overall roof concept. So from the front of the house, it doesn't actually change anything. So those those were the two sort of Nigel, are those eight foot doors. The garage doors are eight foot doors. Yes. Okay. And and the and the entry door is an eight foot door. Okay. But we'll 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 make sure we address we we'll, we'll make sure we address your comments on House J. I I don't disagree. Can I briefly go through for the board the, the uh, minutes that I took just to make sure we can make any necessary corrections? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first comment I had was consider that uh, gable vents must also be amber resistant for high fire zone. That's. Um, on detail 94b that, that's ember ember not amber ember yes okay yeah on detail 94b recommend ensuring that stone does not extend beyond the base and that was on house type c um there's a better way the, the wainscoting detail needs to be addressed with it's the easiest because i don't think 90 that detail necessarily it, i don't think there's any details that show that exactly they just need to address it uh, in detail. Okay, thank you. Flash it. Okay, um, the third comment I had was on also on type C, address how the arch can be construct, constructed um, and detail it so that it shows how the face is intersecting with the interface of the tile and roof. That one we had talked about. Okay, um, uh, the fourth comment, type D, on the face of the garage, um, look at detail uh, details on A91 for the barge rafter size, and um, I wasn't sure if that had been fully addressed by Nigel's um, information about the foam trim or not, or if it should remain. They're going to revise that detail. I don't remember which one it is. Correct. Correct. Hold on. What is it, uh, eight on nine one or something like that? Um, it's eight or two. I, it's eight, yes, eight. Okay. Uh, fifth comment I had was on the type D entry, consider um, reworking the drop down to match the width of the column on the return side. And that was on detail sheet A7.1. Yeah, and, and typically where that, that occurs. Oh, the yeah. Seven and, the 7.1 was the roof plan, uh, was the uh, reflected ceiling sheet, I believe, wasn't it? It, it was the reflected ceiling sheet, correct? Okay, and it I had also noted also on other similar models where this occurs. Correct. Okay, um, on the upper element on sheet A 3.1, um, that upper element works well and consider carrying it to the casitas as well. It's already on the casitas. Um, we just said I just said it 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 it's well it it looks good it's uh 
proportionalist. It's proportional. It's, yeah. it's, it's nice. But it has okay. the same, same no range problem really or base problem. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, and then on, okay, let's see. Where the grade area is in the middle elevation. Oh, this was the, the modeling error. Um, so I'll just note the sheet number and um, take a look at how the slope roof comes up and explore the shape and how you, you would detail that and fix the modeling error, essentially. Yeah, they, yeah, they know what to do there, I think, yeah. That's okay, yeah. great. Thank you. And on the entrance um, with the L-shaped column, which we found out was model J um, on A2.1R and also not on the river sheet, work on the entry pick up, uh, and pick up on column detail. The entry is tall, skinny, narrow, and the arches are also skinny and narrow. Um, study the garage proportions and should be more compatible with the other designs. Yeah, they need to continue to um, develop that plan. Yeah, study it a little bit more in depth. Okay, thank you. Do the other board members have comments at this time? I don't. I'm good. I want to thank the applicant for uh, addressing those issues. And is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this particular item? Do we have any speaker slips for this, David? Uh, no, I'm unaware of anyone who wants to speak. So if anyone, as you indicated, wants to speak, just unmute yourself and identify yourself for the record. I suspect that people are here for the next item. Correct. Okay. Well, Michael, well, what, was this, what was this agendized for? This is agendized for final review and approval. So, you know, other than the addition of the, the smaller house, the previously approved smaller house, and the acknowledgement that the design team is going to look and tighten up uh, the columns, the entries to make it more consistent with the other buildings in the development. I'm pretty comfortable with with that. I think I think that they just need to, yeah, to they're going to develop that last plan. They could come back for. Um, do we re, do we really need to see them come back for that though, James? Can we? Just... Yeah, well, we haven't really reviewed. We don't know what that plan was going to look like, <laughs> really at all. The last one, it could change pretty much. Would it, be, would it be possible to submit those plans on and rather than go before the whole board, do it on consent, where we'll provide you know the revised details just in just in the spirit of expediting things? I know my clients. You can you know, just, you know, if you have preliminary, you can submit them now. Yeah, it, it, it won't slow you down at all. Can we? Can we ask the planner? Can we? Is it possible we can just do that on consent? It really it doesn't matter consent or or full board. I mean, it's the same time frame. Yeah. Right. And you can submit if you have a preliminary approval, which you already do. You mean submit to the building department? Yeah. Yeah, they're in plan check. So it won't really slow you down at all to come back and. With the, with the corrected stuff, right? Hey, Mike. Well, can you yeah. Give them, can you give them final approval on everything but Jay? We can't. Now, we can't parse it out. Well, he, he, let me let me ask this on, to the design team. This is the first time that we're seeing that the last house. Is that correct? Right. Well, well, I think the last house. Uh, the last house was a house that was already approved for final on on the other subdivision that our client is also uh, the developer on. So it's the first time you're seeing it as part of this package. That's correct. And I think you know I think maybe we're 
trying to up the level of, of design aesthetic here. So what we're trying to do is take, rather than just take a previously approved plan and say, we just want to use it, we want to upgrade it. So it's the first time you're seeing it as part of this. I believe the original one you probably saw back in the day when it was approved for the other uh, neighborhood. So this is the first time you're seeing this and and we do want to upgrade it and, and get it up to par with this. So we, we will be making it. It, but it right. won't slow you down at all to come back and show it to us next time, right? No, no, we, we're more than willing to come back and show it. I don't know what uh, your agenda schedule is. We're in plan check now. I think we'll probably get plan check, com our first set of plan check comments back. Uh, theoretically, I mean, depending on everyone's schedule, at least I think at the earliest 30 days out from when we submit it. So uh, as long as we get sort of shoe shoehorn in, coming back to you with, with the plan check corrections, I don't think, think that would be a problem. Yeah, I mean, my, my comment to that would be, it was a previously approved and consistent with the other buildings in the, in the other development. However, it is not consistent with the buildings in this particular development. So even though we have previously approved that floor plan and elevations, it really needs to be, and you admit this, it really needs to be consistent with this particular development. So what I would suggest is that, you know, it continued to move through the plan check process. This last house is the only one we really have to look at again. Uh, so the meeting itself would be fairly simple. Uh, we don't have to look at the other models. So as we cannot part this out and, you know, approve just a certain percentage, we will leave final approval for the entire development at the next meeting if that is something that you guys can i mean i'm only asking that you submit the last house and that's it and we will just review that make sure it's consistent with the project that you are proposing and then we can give final approval on the entirety does that make sense well i, I personally don't know if that's really necessary michael i mean i think that these guys want to produce that a, a high-end product and I think that they'll follow through I, I don't I personally I, don't know if we really need to review it again I, well I, I mean do. my we comment is that what, we don't know what it's going to look like well I mean we've reviewed the other ones we've given preliminary approval on them they've come back for final um, but if they submit something that we haven't had a chance to do a preliminary review on even though it was previously approved under a certain set of circumstances for the other development and consistent with that design, uh, it is clearly um, by admission not consistent with this design. So in order for us to approve this particular project for this particular development, all of those elements must be reviewed to the same level. So with that said, you know, I would suggest, and we can discuss this certainly with the planners that they submit this last house by itself. We, we consider this preliminary review of that particular model, and then we give approval to not only this new model that we were seeing, but the rest of the development as well at the next meeting. It, it won't slow them down at all. No, I mean, there's, they're still going to go through the plan check process and, you know, good luck to you to get it in 30 days. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, like, <laughs> but 30 days not going to happen. And then, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to slow you down in, in any way, shape or form. I mean, you can yeah. still go through the process. You can refine the design prior to resubmittal for, um, for final review at, at the building department level, and then you know one for us, then everything is consistent with um, the pathway to approval. I agree. I think that's the only thing you can do, Mike. I think that that's that basically that's based on our criteria, about the best we could do. 
Well, the, please, um, then we won't have a vote at this time. Um, but go ahead and work with your planner to get that last plan check back to us, get it agendized for our December meeting so that we can maintain the timeline for permits um, that you guys are on right now. Um, Mr. Chair, just to summarize, so in the minutes I should write return for final with revised house plans for Model J. That's correct. Okay, thank you. We're also assuming for for our final approval that the discussions that we've made on these other items are going to be done. Yeah, a lot of the discussion was, you know, they're going to be affected by plan check. Um, some of the discussions with, you know, the, the finalizing of the, the phone details and the interface with the, on that particular model, we can, we can take a look at, you know, if they want to submit that, but, you know, as, as indicated, they are, uh, I have full faith that they will do exactly what they will consider what, what our comments were and you know, putting in a high-end product, you've got to make those changes, so. I'm good with, you know, submitting Model J and then submitting detail sheets to to indicate how they resolve some of the other issues on, on a few of the other models if they want to do that. Any other discussion? Nope. Sure. Is the applicant satisfied with that response? Any questions? <laughs> Did I lose the applicant? Okay. Uh, Shannon, go ahead and, and reach out to them. Will do. Thank you. I'll get these summarized today, too, so that they can um, get started. Yeah, they can take that and, you know, try to get them back for our December. Hey, Shannon, can you get me a, can you get me up on the screen so I can see the, get me up so that I can see the uh, applicant's submissions, too, please? Some reason I'm getting everybody's video, but no, no submissions. I'm not getting the shared screen. I think the best way to to do that is when you um, at the top there's a a row that says who's talking, and there's a button where it says view everyone or view whatever you have it set to. And if you you click view everyone and put the camera viewer at the top, it should show you the plan set below too, if you're on a, a computer. I'm I've, not sure if it would work on another device. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm on my iPhone, so. Okay. <laughs> it's a, you're, gonna it's a, to, you're gonna have to trust us, Bobby. I, I believe you. Believe me, I believe okay. you. All right, hey. guys. Well, um, Shannon, go ahead and reach out to them. Make sure that they're aware of uh, what we're asking for. Get them on the next schedule and with that we will move on to agenda item number two they are number 21 the amg associates llc project and as this is um, agendized for conceptual review we will have a discussion the applicant will present his package uh, the board will ask a few questions and as it is agendized for conceptual we will make no decisions at this time we will only make mere suggestions um, so if you want if the applicant is ready they can go ahead and introduce themselves for the record and we will begin and mr. chair um... I'm, I'm happy to turn it over to the applicants. I do have something just to add for context, um, either before or after the applicants um, introduce themselves. Maybe it's best before. Yes, why don't you go ahead and do that. Okay, thank you. 
So um, I think many folks that are here understand that um, this application has been submitted under a state streamlining provision that's provided for by uh, Senate Bill 35. And you know, if you have any questions about that process, I am, um, I've been in conversations with members of the HOA and a lot of neighbors that have approached me, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, I think it was helpful to see how a, a prior item went through so you could see what kind of the discussion at the architectural review board is, is focused on. Um, because uh, the Senate Bill 35 sort of, well, it does, it limits review of zoning standards and design review standards to only those that are objective and measurable, um, which some jurisdictions have adopted a specific objective standards that apply to these types of projects. The, the county, uh, the Board of Supervisors has not designated that path yet um, for the County of Santa Barbara. So we are working within documents that we already have in our regulatory framework. So the land use ordinance, what it provides that's objective and measurable, um, the ORCA community plan, the items related to aesthetics and uh, a site design that are objective and measurable. So I prepared a memo that outlines those items that we'll sort of use to guide the uh, discussion today. And then the board is also welcome uh, to make suggestions of the courtesy um, on the design and aesthetics of the project. Um, I know we received an, a number of um, a public comment, written public comment already, and I know that the traffic is um, a big concern amongst the neighbors. Um, so I wanted to offer this. Um, I have been communicating with the HOAs and um, I also have talked to Public Work Transportation Division and they are looking forward to meeting with the members of the HOAs and any individuals that have questions about traffic to talk about those um, roadway design standards, the, the estimated trip uh, generation and, and how uh, the design of the roadway and the access drive here are gonna affect the neighborhood. Um, so Will Robertson is the person that we work with in, in Public Works Transportation Division and he is happy to meet with um, neighbors that have questions or you know respond to a phone call and email whatever you'd like but we are going to set up a meeting with the HOA so that they can also disseminate that information to the maximum number of neighbors possible um, since a lot of folks have questions but I just wanted to give a little bit of context um, to what the process looks like I am available uh, I can post my contact information at the end if you don't already have it but I am available to answer any questions you may have about the general process and about Senate Bill 35 in general. Um, so I hope that that is helpful in sort of setting a context and, and focusing what we're looking at today, but also welcoming any um, questions and feedback that you have um, outside of this architectural review process. And I'll, with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant to go over the design of their project and. Um, the considerations that they've made in that design. So thank you guys. Thank you, Shannon. This is Gene Broussard from AMG and Associates. Uh, I'm here with Matthew and Kimberly from our office as well, and we have our architects on the line as well. Thank you, Shannon, again. Um, we will let our architects speak a little bit to the design. I just want to touch a little bit on who we are, what we do. We've been around since the early 2000s. We specialize in affordable housing projects throughout the state of California. We currently own and operate approximately eight to 12,000, depending on how you count it, uh, apartment projects throughout the state of California and currently have approximately 3,000 units under construction between Southern California and Northern California. And this project uh, is a smaller project for us in scale but we tried to approach it in a way that was sensitive to the neighborhood because we know it's surrounded by single family homes. And so a lot of the early design iterations were really close to the corner along frontage and foster there with really no setback. And we'd had two or three different iterations and set back the building approximately 75 feet from foster and planted these large elm trees along the front 
that I get anywhere from, I think this size is 50 to 75 feet and up to 60 feet wide. And so we tried to do our best with what is allowed, you know, in the code for what we're trying to achieve here to minimize the impacts to the neighborhood by setting the building back, pushing it as far back as we can. Um, we even looked at trying to put it on the opposite side of the childcare, but the retaining wall cost and everything was prohibitive and it wasn't feasible. So that's where we ended up. We'll pass it over to our architects, Architects Orange, who are on the line to talk about kind of the design intent and what we're going. But the goal here is to produce affordable housing for families in need in the county. I sort of wonder if you were thinking of the families and how their lives would be impacted by not being able to get out of their homes every day. Heidi. Um, I'm gonna, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna have to ask that um, public comment that you mute yourselves at this time. We will ask at the end of the presentation after the board has had a chance to inquire about the project uh, and make comment. So if we can just hold our comments till the end, we'll let you know when you can speak. So if the applicant wants to continue. Yeah, is uh, is the architecture team yes. on the line? Go ahead. Yes, we're on the line. Hi, my name is Ioana Mayati, and I am the project manager from Architect Orange and designer of this project. And on this project, we are proposing a total of 58 units on a three-story on-grade uh, product. Architecturally, uh, do, would you guys like me to share my screen or would you share your screen? Yeah, if you could share your screen, that would be great. I think it would be easier. Yes, let Thank me try. You. I just think it's better when I'm trying to. Give me one second, please. And let me know when you will be able to share. We're able to see your screen. Okay, we can see it. Perfect, thank you. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we're proposing a total of 58 units on a three-story on-grade product. Uh, as Jean uh, with AMG mentioned, we try to keep our setbacks from the existing, uh, for, for, to be, in order to be sensitive to neighbors and respond to the context. Architect, we try to, even if when we have units close to the neighbors, we try not to have any windows or any openings for privacy. Architecturally, let me go to this exhibit. We studied the context and we think, and we're proposing a more uh, traditional architectural style. And uh, we added roof articulation for visual interest all around uh, the project. And it's a very simple, clean, and we believe elegant um, style for this area. Let me go to this one. Here you can see the colored side plan. We have a two-way driveway uh, going through the through Foster Road and the side street. And uh, we propose amenities right in this location behind. So the, our leasing center is at the center of along this facade and amenities are right next to it. And I think that's about it. Jean, is there anything else you would like to add? No, I think we'll just field questions as they come yes. up from the board. Would you like me to sh keep sharing my screen so we're all looking at the colored site plan? Well, um, we'll probably just ask you to to go through the, the plan a little bit. So if you want to maintain of course, your of course. screen, that'd yes. be great. Mm -hmm. um, I had a question with regards to the existing facilities on site. What connection do you guys have with them? The as far as the connection, um, we we're gonna we're in escrow to buy the entire property. Um, we don't have a connection to them. I think we'll be working with new new tenants of the childcare facility 
but we, you know, we've been working with the current ownership just through brokers, um, but we don't have any direct relationship to the current ownership of the project. Okay, so your the access to your project is strictly off of Foster Road. Well, we will own the entire. I think what you're asking is how the the child care facility and the new proposed building are going to interact. Is what you're asking? Well, I'm just asking how how do you get to the the child care facility? The existing child care facility is it through your Foster Road driveway or is it through the frontage road? It's through frontage road. Is how we're planning on accessing. Okay, and so your your tenants would also. Let's say if you rented the, the units in the back, then you can go down the, the frontage road and come around back into your development. We plan on leaving it on leaving that parking open so that it could be used for circulation, fire, whatever. So it's kind of a shared access through there along frontage road, if that makes sense. So there's almost two parallel driveways. Two parallel access ways, one being frontage one road and one being our dry aisle that's twenty four feet wide in front of that in front of the multifamily structure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll open up the um, questions now for the board. If you guys want to make comments. I just had a quick question uh, on the elevations. It showed some, it looks like they're balconies. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell there on, especially on the front view of the leasing office. Are those actually balconies or is that just detailing? It's detailing. Okay, thank you. So those aren't doors behind it, those are just actually windows? Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. What's the four story element? Uh, the only four-story element is the stair, the stair tower per code. We need to take it all the way to the roof. And also we use it for articulation. So when we have it only, I believe, in one location. It's right here. So it's the stair enclosure, which is right here. What's, the, question height, for what's the height limitation of the project for county? Uh -huh. I, I can speak to that if it's helpful. So um, for an affordable housing project in this zone, um, the maximum height allowed uh, would be 40 feet under typical circumstances, but the applicant has submitted a density bonus request um, through the provisions of state density bonus law. And because the project is 100% affordable, they're entitled to a certain number, um, it's four in this case, of concessions or incentives to development standards that have identifiable cost reductions. Um, and that's ultimately evaluated by the decision maker for the project, which in this case is um, the planning and development director. Um, so they do, in some areas, exceed that 40 foot maximum height from existing grade and existing grade is shown on these elevations. But it is, um, there are other considerations beyond the, the land use and development code in this case. Shannon, how um, does the Orchid community plan come into play here? The Orchid community plan has a number of policies and development standards within it. Um, the only ones that can be applied to the project are those that are objective and measurable. So, for example, um, in the memo that I prepared, there were um, five that I pulled out that related to site design or aesthetics in some way. Um, the first two of which are about uh, trail corridors and that the applicant is working closely with parks uh, about the map trails on the site. Um, and then the other two are about um, landscape buffers around, along the perimeters and also um, decorative masonry walls along the perimeters to provide screening uh, and buffers from other development in the surrounding area. Um, and then there's also a policy about a sound barrier between the site and the US 101. Um, 
where there's they're meant to have landscaping of drought tolerant trees and shrubs and a, a berm. Um, there are some considerations um, on the sound wall item, mainly that uh, there, Caltrans has a right of way, and so we we have to look into whether when um, the Tobes development went into the uh, north of this project, they were not able to construct that berm or wall um, because of concerns that Caltrans had. Um, and so at that time, uh, Caltrans did not allow um, what was listed as a development standard um, in the Orchid Community Plan. And that's likely the case still. Um, but if it uh, comes to it, that, that could be a, one of the concessions or incentives that the the project also seeks um, if it's infeasible. What's a real, Shannon, what's the relative height of freeway and site? Which is higher? Um, I want to, it would be really helpful if you could show the conceptual grading plan for that. Give me one second, please. Thank you. Maybe you, maybe you can best speak to the relative Great differential there too. Uh, I'm trying to think which exhibit would work better. This one, okay. So our building right now has a finished floor of 45. And then I don't see 41 is right here. Let me see if by doing maybe Google Maps if it would be easier because I don't see the finished floor of the freeway. Give me one second. Yeah, it looks like um, that the freeway is about 10 feet lower. So you're going to be looking and, up to this thing. Huh? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be standing up on a hill from the freeway. Correct. It's going to be sitting really high. Yeah. What are the what are the grades on the backside against the residential? Is that is that declining towards the residential houses beyond, or is that elevated? Yeah. If you take a look at the house that's on Foster. That's the size trees on Foster. There's about an eight foot elevation change where this development is eight feet higher than so the finished grade so, at that house. So the contours there on the uh, on the left hand side are that's sl that's sloping down towards the house. Sloping, yes. correct. It's sloping down towards the residential development. Okay, so thank you. Maximum height is forty eight feet plus plus whatever hill it's on. If, if if we look at the the elevations, the the average height of the building is below. Um, maybe I want I want if you could um, show us the the elevation so that we can get an idea of the average height. Thank you. So the existing grade is right here. Everything it shows now. So there, there are some architectural elements that um, you push the height up, but the average height, if you look at um, the side details, there, it's it's much lower than um, the um, forty-four feet right? ultimate height that they're requesting. Yeah, it's forty-four feet and it's on a hill in a residential neighborhood. Neighborhood compatibility, we can't comment on, correct? Right, if there were approved objective standards that talked specifically about something that was measurable and not subjective in nature, um, that related to neighborhood compatibility, then we could address those items, but there are not um, any such Okay. So we can't, we can't say that the building has got vertical elements making it even look taller or anything like that. 
Uh, no, not with the uh, current regulatory framework. So Good. the fact that it's sitting high, it's going to dwarf the neighboring houses is irrelevant at this point, even though that's aesthetics, which is our purview. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, if the, the the thing is that the project cannot be subject to any discretionary um, processes. So, if the project we can state our opinions, and that goes into the record and on to planning commission. This project is approved through a ministerial process, and there is no discretionary decision maker. So, it's a zoning clearance, and if it complies with the objective requirements in the regulatory framework and the state requirements that um, that apply to SB 35 projects, the county would approve it and it's not um, which I can appreciate this. Okay, sorry about that. This is a generic kind of question, but I'm confused about what affordable housing is in this area. Um, how does it, maybe how that's does it best directed at AMG about what the Thank you, Paul. Yeah, we can we can discuss that. Um, affordable housing in this area is you know, there, there will be a regulatory agreement that is going to be entered into between us and the county for a period of 55 years that restricts the income and the rent at low income levels in order for us to qualify you know for this ministerial process and what we're proposing and so it's the the rent um if we can pull up we can, I can, if you would like an example of some specific rents but it's you know rents are set typically around 60 percent of the area median income in the county and so, so we so, yeah i can pull up some and to give you an idea of what the 80% of the area me median income and lower is what's considered lower income. And it uses specifically Section 8 um, levels that come from housing and urban development. Uh, and so in this case, for a family of four, it is just over 100,000, and that's 80% of the EMI. So a hundred thousand dollars for a family of four. It's low income. Well, it's lower income. Um, Eighty percent of AMI or lower. Um, but you know, uh, I think AMG would be better served to discuss how their, their facilities yeah. operate. Yeah. So just to give you an example, that like a majority of the units will be at sixty percent rent levels. So. Studios will be at 1300. One bedrooms would be at 1400. Two bedrooms, 1600. And then there'd also be a utility allowance. So they don't, we have to credit for any utilities. So it's usually anywhere between 50 and $80 a month that we credit so they don't have to pay utilities. And then some may have deeper affordability depending on the financing at around 50%, which would be. Um, a thousand dollars, a thousand ninety-three for a studio, eleven hundred for a one-bedroom, and fourteen hundred for a two-bedroom. Well, I may be naive, but that doesn't sound that low. I was thinking I could get. The I think we could all uh, probably qualify. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, Shannon or, or maybe Michael, so our purview here is, is truly limited to just some comments on this. We don't really have any input as we would on a typical or a conventional application. Nothing subjective. Uh yeah nothing subjective um the memo i prepared one of the things that i think would be really helpful to have some var feedback on the um the landscaping requirements in particular um 
So there are some requirements for landscaping around parking areas and also um, in general in the design residential zone, which is the zone district in this case, um, to make sure there's adequate landscape buffer around um, that the plants that are proposed are appropriate. Um, that they would meet WELO requirements, that they're um, hydro zone correctly. There's, if we could go the, we are on the conceptual landscaping um, page, but you can see clearly the, the trees that are proposed and um, any feedback from the developer would be really helpful on this, but there's not a differentiation between the, um, the shrubs and the ground cover. So it would be helpful to know um, what's planned around those tree areas and where there's uh, retaining walls proposed as well for some context. Uh, Iowana, I don't know if you can go into a little bit more of the detail there, if, if you can, on the landscaping and how it's planned in the retaining walls, if you have any of that information at this preliminary stage. Uh, give me one second. Uh, this is something we it's still preliminary, so we do expect this to be further defined as we are moving forward on the design development of this project. But right now, the only thing we're proposing um, a two feet retaining retaining wall along here, only two feet, and then we're proposing approximately five feet retaining wall along the north. Um, I'm sorry, northwest side in this location. And then the other retaining wall is on the northern side right here, two feet as well. On the east side, I think, I think I'm trying to see if we have the note, but the, I believe there might be another retaining wall uh, in this area. Um. I want to. I apologize to interrupt here, but if we could um, have, I think there's some difficulty hearing with other microphones. So, but if everyone could, thank you. Can you hear me now? Can you say retaining wall? There's a retaining wall. You sit on the right side. That's two feet tall. In the park. Right here, yeah, right here. Right. They're two feet. Proposed two feet. Maximum retaining wall along. That's so here. That, that elevates the parking. Or which way is up? So right here we are. Right here we are. The parking is two feet higher. Than and you have a retaining wall on the right side. Mm -hmm. Right here. So this is at the no, left side on the right side. I'm sorry, hear echo. I cannot hear you. Yeah, there's a lot. Can you there's hear me? There's a retaining wall on the right side along the parking lot. Which way does that go? Up or down? Does it the parking lot is lower or higher? So the parking lot in this area right here is at 43 feet and then it goes here at 46 as we go to mm -hmm. and then outside you see right here it's 44. Shannon are there any rules about wall screening? Um, wall screening? So there there is a, an applicable standard let me just um, clarify that so what's provided for uh, landscaping requirements around parking areas is that um, they they have the option of either um, because it's also a residentially zoned project they can either um, provide a landscape buffer or a wall or a combination Let's go there. Brandon. Hey, come on. So um, obviously we need to focus the discussion on <laughs> the design review at hand. So I would appreciate if um, people could wait for their opportunity to comment. Um, so the standard that does apply here, and I'll just read it out for you. Uh, screening shall be provided adjacent to all lot lines consisting of a five foot wide strip planted with sufficient shrubbery to effectively screen the parking area or a solid fence or wall not less than four feet in height. 
Uh, fences or walls abutting streets should be ornamental with texture, pattern, and shadow relief. Planting fences or walls abutting a street shall not exceed 30 inches in height for a distance of 25 feet on either side of the entrances or exits to the property. And it's phrased that way just to make sure that the visibility for cars is uh, adequate. Um, and this requirement for screening may be waived or modified by the review authority if the adjacent property has already provided a solid wall not less than four feet in height. So what they're proposing here is a, a combination of both walls and a landscape buffer. Um, but perhaps if they're, they want to speak to um, what they plan for the shrub shrubbery, I don't think that there's um, a lot of detail as far as what screening would be provided by shrubbery they, there. They just said they were going to put a retaining wall there, which meant there's no, there's no wall above the parking level. So how are we going to screen that? The landscaping is two feet below the parking, and we could put a wall, but it's going to get four feet tall. So, what do you think, Kevin? It's not there. Well, the other thing is that if you put a four foot, then obviously you got a, a six foot wall. Exactly. To really make a comment, we'd have to see detail of shrubbery layout to, to really. I would, can we go back to the grading plan for a moment, please? The area that, that's adjacent to the, uh, would be the west side of the, the building there against the residential, I guess it'd be to the west, I believe. Um, shows a two to one cut or two to one slope down. How, how are you proposing to control that erosion there? And it's, yeah, that that's all part of what I can't really comment on until I see, you know, what they're laying out in there. It, it, a, a much higher level of detail. It's um, the density of shrubbery, the type of shrubbery. It, it's all missing at this point, so I I can't really tell you anything on that. Yeah, to one, have, have jute netting, um, and you know, a lot of other elements go into it. So, um, well, it looks like it's sloping down to a uh, some type of a drainage swale. There is that. Is that what you see there, Kevin? Well, it's it's. I see a wall like? sloping down to uh, like a back of walk or something. Proposed two foot max retaining wall, and then. That's it to the existing right of way. Well, that's at the parking lot. What I mean, I'm talking about a little bit to the north of that, where the where the building it looks like the edge of the building there, and it, where it shows that two to one two to one slope down into that. Apparently, there's a swale there. I, I don't know, but water is leaving um, the property at that point. Appears to me that. Yeah, that's there. There's got to be some way to convey it out because you can't drain across the property line. Um, exactly. It, it's super sandy soil there too, so there's a lot of stability issues that have to be addressed. That means it's a high erosion potential. Yeah, exactly. That, so it's basically sitting on top of an old sand dune. Yeah, I live in the area, so I, I'm familiar with the sand. Ioana, can you go to the landscaping plan, please, where we can kind of look at that area and see what is called out? So these are all the, the legend and the mixed shrubs that are planned along that area. You're correct that there's a large slope off of our site that goes to the adjacent homes. So is there additional shrubbery that you would like along this edge? We don't know what you've That got. is not specified here? Well, we don't know how many you're. We don't know how many you're. It's just a color. So, you know, you could be proposing three shrubs and I want double that. That only gives us six. It's, it's, there's not enough it, information in there for me to comment properly. Okay. Well, I think to give us guidance, can you let us know what you would like there and then we can make the changes to meet that? I can't tell you how to design it. That's not something I'm, I'm allowed to do. Okay, well, let, let me pardon the interruption, but these 
they're agendized for conceptual review only. Um, as indicated previously, as they move through the process, we will get more and more detailed information. Um, so what I would suggest is that prior to you coming back to this board and for a preliminary review and so forth, we, we don't, is that you we just, don't do that, though, do we? So can I step in here um, yes, for rights please. of clarity? So preliminary review and final review by BAR um, would require the board to make uh, subjective findings, which is a discretionary process that the project can't be subjected to. So they are only before you for conceptual for that reason. So do they need to come back? They don't need to come back, right? Uh, they're only before you for conceptual review. I mean, it, and it, if you had items that were offered as like a, a courtesy review um, for them to consider to implement, um, there who's, going to who's going to review the landscape requirements then? That would be my role as well. Um, so I, it would be a comment that I would have in my feedback letter too, that there isn't enough detail here to determine if it meets the landscaping standards um, that were provided to the board in the memo as well. So we need to convey to you every all of our concerns about the landscape so that you can review it? It would be very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Shannon, it, that kind of puts it to me then. Um, yeah. So my concerns are this site's subject to severe erosion because it is very sandy. So the planting, the landscape needs to reflect that concern for stabilization. Um, the screening I see at the street, I don't think is adequate to, sc to screen the building properly. There should be additional planting adjacent to the building. Those planters are awfully narrow. Um, I'd like to see some more cross sections of how they're addressing the planting and the retaining walls and where that interfaces with the street and the public view. Um, Kevin, I'm sorry to interrupt. I got more planting along the front of the building, but the comment about the retaining walls, I just was uh, okay. trying to get behind. So the the planters adjacent to the building seem narrow and inadequate to properly screen the building. The Because of the grading changes, I'd like to see how those things interface with the adjacent properties and the public right of way, the edges of the project how that is all coming together the because we don't see density of and qu or quantity of plants and specific species location so i'm unable to comment on how that's working um the tree spacing along foster road and the old uh, access road the old i believe is part of the old 101 the frontage road I think the spacing there is inadequate to screen the building. Um, and there, the parking lot should be broken up. It's just, it's a lot of asphalt and there should be planter islands in there uh, to help break that up. What about the type of screening trees, Kevin? Well, that, that goes to screening. Is it a tall, narrow tree? Um, so I, I need to zoom in on it. Let me, I've got it up on my screen here, so. And there is this a policy. Is a this should be kicked out. It's not in keeping with the neighborhood. David, um, David Villalobos, could, could you assist us in uh, making sure that everyone is Yeah, muted. I'm working on it. Sometimes there's so many people, it's hard to identify them right away. So just to be Thank clear, so we're going to have a public comment portion. Um, we ask that you not interrupt the board's questions at this time. Um, it's disruptive to the meeting. Thank you. So um, I was saying that there is a requirement in the LEDC about planter islands um, and where they should be located. So um, that is something that would need to be implemented as well. Also, parking, parking lot screening, did you mention that? 
Kevin? I think you did. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about with the retaining walls and that how the frontages all come together with the, um, there are some places where it's sloping in and, you know, off to the west. And so I'd like to see some detail about how that works all the way around the site because it's impacting the neighbors, uh, the neighborhood. Um, is there sufficient erosion control? Is there uh, de a dense planting that will help stabilize those slopes? And um, let me get back to the plant list. Make sure that some of these are uh, spreading and rooting plants that will help hold it together. Most of them are not. They're appropriate for the area. I would uh, be careful about the philodendron xanadu. Um, it tends to freeze in this area. Uh, but most of the other things um, will do fine. Uh, but it's difficult to tell where these things are going and what sort of screening or slope stabilization effect we'll get from it. Uh, One thing that the landscape oh, sorry, you want to consider is that you've got a lot of two to one slopes. So you're going to have to put the, the state mandated three inches of bark down and then put your jute netting on top of that, which is counterintuitive, but that's what we have to do in this area. So it's something that uh, most people don't realize. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Shannon, can we, um, my concern here is, is in particular that slope on that west side, the two to one cut right from the edge of the building foundation. Um, are we allowed to consider or ask the applicants whether they have a soil report that identifies that they can do that to this parcel? So a soil report will be required as part of the, um, the grading permit process. If that's a requirement that's in the grading code. Um, and the applicant may already have one. So I will um, turn it over to AMG to see if they, they have changed. You know, typically so, you run, you know, you, you kind of come out of there like five feet so that your footing has some space to daylight or, or it's considerably deeper. And that would start the slope at that point. And, and this doesn't indicate that that's how this is being proposed. Um, so I, I am concerned, particularly with this erodibility of the soil that that's going to be a real problem area along there. The setback is, is relatively tight as it is. Yeah, this is Gene from AMG. We, um, as Shannon noted, we'll have to do a full geotech report that will study and make recommendations to the footings there. And so, yeah, if you're, you are right that if there is some soil issues, sandy issues that we'll have to mitigate that with deepened footings, use piles or alternate means to make it happen. We, I don't expect that to happen. Um, also, I think there is some, you know, there, like you said, there is a large cut which helps bring the building down. I think if we remove some of that cut, we would raise the overall, I would think that we would raise the overall pad and, and park associated parking, but it will be required to do a full geotech report with the footing design of that retaining wall. Okay, thank you. Do any other members of the board have any suggestions or comments? Well, I have a lot of comments, but I don't know if they're appropriate. So. Well, Shannon, let me ask you this. Um, Steve had asked with regards to what we can and comment on, um, and then you brought up landscaping. Is that the only thing that we can comment on? Well, um, it's one of the areas where we have objective standards that are, are incorporated that are clear to everyone and measurable. Um, but if you had some courtesy comments that could be provided about the actual design of the building, um, I'm sure that they would be appreciated by the applicant just to um, get a sense of where they might be able to make design improvements. Um, unfortunately, like I said, we don't actually have um, the board hasn't adopted objective standards that would apply to the um, 
it, things that we could actually apply to the massing and design of, of the actual structure at this time. So um, if, if you did have something that you thought might be helpful to the applicant, I could include it as um, an advisory that has been provided as a, you know, a courtesy review. Well, I guess, okay, well, James, I mean, if you recall, when we were looking at the project down towards Rice Ranch, you know, we were concerned about the three story massing and it was considerably further from the from any side yards or any other property. Uh, my concern here is, is just the overall massing of this building. And I don't know if, if that's a, something we can comment on, but possibly it, maybe the applicants could look at reducing the massing or the scale of the most, I guess, it's, I think it's the Western side towards those uh, single family houses, dropping it a story or something that would reduce there's, the there's apparent mass along there's, there. There's, there's ways of reducing the look. This is emphasizing the height. It's also, you can probably get rid of that four story tower in some fashion or another so that it doesn't stick up in the front. There's ways of painting it so that it becomes more horizontal. Um, but you know, it's no. just a big building and I'm afraid there's gonna be other ones there too. I know that's like lipstick on a, you know. I know, and then it's elevated to boot um, on a pad above everything. Um, but there isn't, we have no, it, that's subjective, so. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna have the massing of the credit union building down the right, but, uh, when this thing is completed, it's gonna be humongous. Yeah, and then I don't know what they're planning on doing with the other, I can just imagine the other lot. Well, this is a single lot, and um, they're like we've gone over there 58 units proposed on this property, only 60 development units um, are allowed under current law. So we're not anticipating that there would be additional development on this property. What about the adjacent property they're going to buy? I can't speak to the applicant's intent. But so okay. I don't know. Yeah, we're we're only in escrow to buy one property, just one one large property that encompasses the whole thing. We're not we, like Shannon said, we're not permitted to do anything anywhere else on the property or behind the child care. Good to know. So so does that mean that the child care parcel is this, is one and the same with this parcel? Yeah. Looks like Correct. It. Well would there not Correct. be Correct. And we're I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just, I was going to say we're happy to, you know, take your advice. Obviously, we, we do need to stick to our unit count, but we're happy to add landscaping, change the way we paint it, potentially look at moving the stair tower to the back and doing anything we can to mitigate that. Um, like we said in the beginning, we tried to push it away from the street as much as possible, and uh, it's, you know, it still provide parking. Parking is not required for this type of project, but we did provide parking, and we're happy to take those, you know, suggestions and incorporate them. But I mean, my my question, I guess, was that if the the parcel where the the nurse nursery school or the daycare center is, is that one and the same parcel with your project, or is there a property line there yes. that meets where the colored rendering ends, and the, is, is it the same property? It is the same. It is the same property. Well, not actually seeing how far it goes back to the north of this. Would it be would it be possible to keep the same unit count or reduce the massing? Perhaps maybe two separate buildings with a second building located maybe to the north of the nursery school there, or something that would be a get it a little further away from from the neighbors and reduce the overall building mass. Yeah, that, that was the very first thing we did, as I mentioned the, at the intro, is we tried to look at doing that. It's just that when we separate the two buildings, you, then you have two separate costs, right? And so there's then getting all the utilities to the back, then the slope in the back. And we tried to squeeze, we did look at squeezing the units in the back, but we just couldn't make it work without having serious retaining walls back there. There's a lot of grade as you go towards the back of the site as it falls towards the adjacent apartments. So we did look at that. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but we, we did explore it. 
Okay. Thank I you. should note too that there are some constraints on the site related to its proximity to the 101 and also um, the noise contours that are um, mapped in the community plan that, that do uh, provide some constraints as far as where uh, especially habitable noise sensitive uses can be located um, just to provide some additional context to what's happening on there. Okay, so do the members of the board have any other comments at this time? Hey, Mike, I wanted yes, to say sir. something. Um, one of the things that I think that, you know, it's important for all of the people that are in the audience and, and even the board to understand is that, you know, we need to look more towards um, who's making the decisions to make these locations for MROs. Uh, you know, affordable housing is is a problem that has been uh, exacerbated by the by by the overall difficulty and expenses that that our local governments have placed on making developments. So, you know, it it's not it's not something that the architectural review board can um, really speak to because we're part of the problem we're part of the slowdown we're part of the, we're part of the bottleneck and so we've come across you know a, a, a crossroads where we're, now we're getting these MROs forced into in neighborhoods that people are are unhappy with and and rightfully so but it but it's a bigger problem that we don't have a lot of um, we don't have a lot of leadway because up, you know, play, people way above where we are are saying, "Hey, look, you guys gotta, you gotta get some housing in there that people can afford," and and it's because we have been so restrictive in the way we do business in allowing housing in the past that 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 these things are actually getting shoved down everybody's throat. So, you know, I I, I hear some comments from people in the background that are in the meeting. And and I appreciate the you know the sediment the feeling that's coming from them, but but this isn't really the place. We we don't even have any say over over these things. Um, they need to go. They need to go look at at who's in charge in the government and see how you know if when these things are are uncomfortable, you know how they how they make those changes so that that these MROs aren't there and and is it and and then understand that it's a it's a long-term process to allow people to develop property so that there's room for our kids and our grandkids in our communities. A hard thing to, it's a hard thing to accept for some people, but anyway, uh, as far as the building, I'm way down there with what Jim was saying. It's just a big, massive building, but uh, I don't know how you get, how, you know, who decided that this spot was a good spot for an MRO when you have so many units that you have to put in such a tight area, you know, that that's the same, that's the problem we have in some of the other MRO sites. Uh, they don't allow for enough parking for the individuals that are there. They don't, they don't allow for enough living space for the people that are there. The, the program's a little skewed by saying, hey, look, you know, the average lot site has to be this, the number of people per acre has to be this. And they come up with these, these ideals that make it very difficult for, the applicant to meet the the rules that are set forward and make something that's kind of aesthetically pretty and and a pleasing to to the rest of the, the community around them. So I, I think I think everybody needs to understand that that's you know wh whether it's this applicant or the next applicant or the applicant after that somebody's going to have to build affordable housing and. Uh, we need to we need to step back and see how we're MROs and if there's any you know is the county doing its best uh, best due diligence in assigning these locations more than than what we're actually looking at now. So I, I want everybody in the audience to understand that you know we don't have to pay. not the play in, in among our our meeting so. Um, I, pre I appreciate 
everyone's feelings, but it's just not the right place to have the have the discussion. That was all I had. Um, Bobby, I, I really appreciate your comments. I think you made some really good points about what the constraints are and, and how housing has, has worked in the county. Um, I just wanted to provide just one point of clarity. So for those who aren't familiar um, with what the MRO uh, zone district is, there were, um, as the county has to prepare a housing element and count basically all the areas where we could produce housing. Um, and that's a process that happens every eight years and it's a mandated cycle by the state. So the last cycle that came around, um, they did establish two areas in the county, which they zoned MRO, multi-residential um, orchid is what it refers to. And those two sites are on um, Bradley where those apartment buildings have been constructed. There's one proposed on P site three, which is um, by Clark and the 101 essentially. Um, one's built out, one is not yet approved. Um, but it, the applicant here is not proposing a rezone to that type of zoning. And the other note to make is that in those MRO zones, that's actually market rate housing. Um, it's not affordable housing. So I just wanted to provide some context because I know like <laughs> a lot of folks are out and they're interested, but you don't necessarily, um, you know, have the familiarity with the process. So I wanted to just provide some additional background as to what is happening on the larger scale of the community. Yeah, that, that's, those are all good points, Shannon. And, you know, it's a, it, it, it's a big scope and, and, and people just can't see the whole scope. It's, you know, um, there, there's a lot of restrictions in and among the county in, in every direction. And, um, and, and, it, and it doesn't just go to the annual review of these MROs. It goes to, you know, how many units we are putting on, on other part, on other projects, just like the last one we saw with, you know, Rice Ranch, there's 750 units in Rice Ranch, there's 750 acres and there's 350 acres plus or minus that's housing and 400 acres that's open. And, and that's all well and good. And we went through those, all those, all of the, you know, all of the process to make sure that all the houses comply with the general design standard of each one of those things. And, and, and it's good for people to open their eyes and look and say, Hey, look, um, you guys want open space, you want trails, but you're, you're not allowing for enough units in other places so that it's, you know, that, that the overall cost of housing drops a little bit per, per unit. Uh, it's, it, it's just, a, it is the way it is right now. And, and if we had some energy, you know, with, with these people in some concern, other than let's just say, hey, we don't want housing next to us. You know, hey, how do we make it, how do we make the process streamlined and more efficient and, and less costly for everybody? then we would probably not necessarily need such extreme units in such small spaces. But like I said, it's still not, this is not the, this is not the place to have the discussion about whether or not that MRO is gonna be an MRO or not, because that's already a done deal. Um, and then, you know, that everybody just needs to understand what, what position this particular entity is in. That's my that's my point. We need everybody needs to know what what position okay. you're actually in here. All right, thank thank you, Bobby. I just wanted to to add a little bit of clarity on that. I mean, Shannon has already indicated where the MORs are, the two existing ones. Um, this, however, you know, was zone design residential A uh, quite some time ago. So the density was established for this particular lot in this particular project some time ago. Um, and as indicated, you know, there's not a whole lot that we can say, uh, not a whole lot of direction that we can give at this time. Um, but what I'd like to do is now open it up to public comment. I would, however, indicate that I would like to limit public comment to to no more than two minutes and that just to speak on the aesthetic of the project you know how it looks the architecture uh, i don't think we have time nor do we have the authority 
to discuss traffic, uh, to discuss density, uh, certainly not to discuss property values. I mean, we are a board for architectural review. Uh, you have been listening for quite some time, and specifically on the first item, and then to this one, how this process is kind of restrained as far as what we can provide the applicant as far as direction is concerned. So, um, David, I'm not sure how you want to handle this as far as public comment is concerned. So, yeah, um, you, Michael, I believe, I think the best way to do is just to go down the list so everyone knows how, so everyone doesn't speak all at once. We'll just go down the list. Right. I, I have a, a timer on my phone. Um, I can use that. Um, and so we'll just go down uh, alphabetically as it's listed down in the um, attendees list here. And I think that we might have a couple of phone callers who aren't showing up and then we'll get to you towards the end. Um, so we'll start with uh, Alejandra Munoz to be followed by Bobby McGray. Um, Ms. Munoz, if you could unmute yourself and if, uh, if, it, if there are people who are in attendance who don't wanna speak, that's fine. You can just say, I don't, I'm just listening and then we'll just move on to the next person. We'll just go down the list. Uh, Ms. Munoz, go ahead when you're ready. Uh, uh, hi, yes, good morning. Um, I am actually a resident of the community and a homeowner. And um, I mean, my main concern, I think, with a lot of other homeowners here um, is uh, the building mass and, you know, how it's it's going to be very high. So that was one of my main concerns. But um, I don't have any other comments. I don't know if that's something that people can touch on more. Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Munoz. I'm sure the um, maybe perhaps the applicant will have an opportunity to address public comment when we're done. Um, all right, uh, Bobby McRae. Yes, um, I'm a homeowner and um, on the HOA board of Knollwood Terrace, and our major concerns are the homes that sit on the west edge of the property. We own uh, that green belt behind there. It's going to be drainage, erosion. You're going to put a 48, 48 foot building behind our homes there. They're never going to see the sunshine. It's too big of a mass, too close, too close to our homes. Um, we need to really work on that. We're willing to work on that, but they have to put more shrubbery, uh, a larger wall up. Um, you said we couldn't comment on traffic, but um, that's a huge concern. Our traffic, you know, what mitigation is there going to be for traffic along Foster Road? And I believe it's Morning Glory. We need stop signs. Um, we need some help there. We're not saying don't build the project because of it, but we definitely need some help. We need to have a better road. Um, we, <laughs> We need stop signs. It would be nice to have speed limit signs on this road. So with that in mind, um, you know, please, 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 let's look at the project. Let's see what we can do, um, which isn't discretionary. This is a part of it's structural. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, our next speaker is Bonnie Hayden. Doesn't look like Bonnie, do you, doesn't look like you have a microphone attached. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to connect one. Um, if not, we can come back to you if you're able to uh, attach a microphone. Um, moving on, our next speaker will be Connie. Um, and I apologize in advance if I, if I pronounce your name incorrectly. I, I do apologize for that. Connie uh, Van uh, Belagem to be followed by Deborah uh, Lutzo. Connie, are you still there? Okay, uh, let's let's move on. Maybe we can come back to Connie. Maybe she stepped away. Uh, Deborah Lutzo to be followed by um, uh, Fisher. Good morning. Can you hear me? Uh, go ahead. Sure. Head Thank you so much. Uh, again, my name is Debbie, and I live directly across the street from this humongous, <laughs> very high project. Um, a couple of questions. I noticed that there's a chain link fence at the back of the structure. Um, I know we're talking about retaining walls, but I think there was a chain link fence 
the back between this development and the uh, school that get, denotes to me a temporary fence. So that to me means that eventually that chain link fence may come down. Could you address that please? And thank you so much for bringing attention to some of the issues that I have about the height of this building. It's sitting on top of a hill. It's gonna be like a big box store dumped in the middle of an established neighborhood. A neighborhood that this particular school had been a part of for over 20 years. Thank you for your time, and I hope that we can address these issues. Thank you. Um, our next speaker uh, will be uh, Fisher. If you're there, looks like you're joining us via the web. Uh, to be followed by yeah. Gabriel Lule. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm here. Uh, well, just a comment on the appearance. Um, yeah, it looks it looks to me like a uh, 19th century factory building. You're really pretty ugly. If you made it brick or brown, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But a question for the board, is there any reason why the board cannot adopt measurable standards now to apply to this building? Anybody there? Yeah, we're here. Um, the board, we are a function of the local government. The only ones that can provide standards and direction are the decision makers above us. And I so, think some of the, oh, I'm, I apologize, Michael. Go, go ahead, Shannon. I think some of the confusion might be coming from when I referenced the board, I, I'm referring to the board of supervisors, not the board of architecture review. So the board of supervisors are elected officials and in order to adopt any sort of ordinance or standards that would provide a regulatory framework, it has to be approved by the board of supervisors. Um, so they have tasked long range planning, which is a division of planning and development to prepare those types of standards, but they also set the work program, the calendar for which everything that they want long range planning to do, what order they want them to do it in. And so this bill has been around for almost four years. Um, there's been opportunity for those types of standards to be um, adopted, but it has not come up in the work program yet. So I anticipate that it's um, probably about two years away so we would have standards like that. Just to provide some overall yeah. context yeah. but yeah. what's the timeline for this project in terms of actually having it in place and people moving in really yeah i don't i don't want to speak out of turn here but i think it's probably a question that um, a lot of people would have so um the senate bill that applies it provides metrics or essentially a timeline that the county has to meet so um within 60 days of the initial submittal we have to determine eligibility um, for processing under SB 35, and then also consistency with all objective development standards that would apply to the project. So not just the ones in the memo today that apply to site design. And the okay, but bottom line, what, what's the what's the realistic time frame? We don't need to know all this. So it depends. If if there's inconsistencies with policies, then the applicant is provided an opportunity to address those, and then the timeline would largely depend on when the applicant resubmits. But if everything was consistent and we made that determination at 60 days, we would have to approve the project within 30 days from that determination. And then building time and what, year, maybe a year? The building permit process, it, it varies on how many plan check cycles, but six months, a year approximately. Okay. All right, uh, now one thing I noticed is the parking's all up front and uh, so the architect expressed the opinion that somehow was a, a good thing, but uh, I'm not so sure it wouldn't be good to have the parking in the back because, you know, you, were, you drive, we're going to see this building every day. And like I say, it looks like a, a 19th century factory building. Now you are with these cars up front um, and who knows what those are going to be like, you know. Uh, so it might actually be better to put the cars in the back. I think that should be considered. Um, and uh, I guess there's no 
measurable standards in terms of density or unit size, but I, if there are, I guess the, you're saying the project meets those standards, and is that correct? That, so I, I'd of, like in terms to, of density yeah, people, at the end, but yeah. there are requirements for density. Um, it's eight units per acre, but they've also applied for what's called a density bonus through state density bonus law. I talked about it briefly earlier, but it okay. allows them an 80% increase in units, okay. which so is what they're utilizing. Right. So basically this project blows through a lot of standards, but they're permitted to do that is essentially what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I guess uh, in terms of the shrubbery, you know, and the two for retaining walls, I mean, that's basically in my mind a zero. A uh, two for retaining wall, that's that's nothing, you know. And the shrubs, I mean, those are gonna be trampled by people in no time. The trees will die. I mean, it's it's a big zero in my mind. Um, I think there's a lot of BS going around here. And comments, while well, we can tell, we can, you know, ask them to consider this and that. I mean, they're not gonna pay any attention. But uh, just so we get that on the record. That's all for me. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Appreciate it. Um, our next speaker will be uh, Gilda Lule to be followed by Glenn Gunsoli. Gilda, are you still with us? Uh, looks like you've unmuted yourself. Go ahead when you're ready. Uh, Gilda, did you not want to speak? Um, okay, so uh, Gilda, it looks like maybe you're having some mic issues. Um, if you can try to work on that, we can come back to you. Uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Gunsoli, are you here still? I, I am. I have no comments at this time for this meeting. Thank okay, you. great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, our next speaker will be Heidi Schneider to be followed by James uh, Brenneman. Um, I'm Heidi Schneider. I live in the neighborhood of uh, off of Morning Ridge, right in the corner of Morning Ridge and Union Valley Parkway. As you can imagine, traffic is an issue for me, but I'd like to address this parking situation you have. It, it appears that there are I'm thinking we're going to have approximately 120 cars coming from this settlement. It doesn't look like there's 120 parking spaces. And I think we can legitimately assume that there will be approximately two cars per unit. Um, that means that all of that parking that is inadequate will be spilled out onto the street, just like it is on that Bradley property where they are. there is literally not one speck of road that doesn't have cars parked on the edge of the street even around the park because there's inadequate parking. So obviously I think we need to, we need, definitely need to address the parking. As far as the shrubberies and the like, the, it, it really does look barren based upon what you've, what you've shown. Almost no shrubberies. Uh, two foot ret retaining wall is, is basically just, you know, it's obviously there not for, not for, to help anything other than maybe to keep a little stand from falling over. Um, I also am concerned about the exits. You, it looks to me like you have one official exit from the parking lot. Is that correct? Yeah, one, one exit. So all those cars will be coming out of that one little exit? Basically, they've got two. This is, we have two, there's two. Oh, the other exit is run over the kids on their way to class, right? Sorry, but but I seriously, I've I, we've all known this. This preschool has been there for for over twenty years. We've many of the people in the neighborhood have even used it, and we know what the traffic situation is around the preschool. So I'm concerned that you're you're sending traffic out of the building right to where the kids be, are being dropped off for the preschool. So how are you? Alexa, the KMJ five eighty. So, Ms. Schneider, I'm, I apologize. Um, your two minutes is up. If you could wrap up your comments. Okay. But Thank you. After what we've been through in the way of the pandemic, what small businesses have went through. You know, we've been so, if um, if you're, yeah, if, if, I haven't called on you. Back if to the mute yourself, back please. To the All right. So, um, Mr. Brenneman, go ahead. 
Uh, yes, I, I've got a couple of questions. Um, first of all, we, we've established that this is a, se a severe erosion area. And I'm wondering what impaction requirements are designated for that and if AMG has addressed those impaction requirements in their submittal. Um, I'd like you to check into that because that'll be important. You're putting a huge building on a sandbar. And that um, that can be really uh, really a problem and, and, and also impact the, the erosion part of it. Uh, then, then the next thing is, you know, we're, like you said before, putting lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. You got this great big huge building and you have to have a standoff for it, my understanding off the road, and that's why you put the parking in front. So, um, you know, th this is just just not, a, you know, not really acceptable in anything that Santa Barbara has ever put forth in this way of building stuff. Um, and who's gonna maintain the property um, of, around the building itself? Is that gonna be part of what the people are supposed to do that live there? Or is Santa Barbara County going to do that? Or is AMG responsible for that over the year? And the next thing, the I, I guess they don't have any, um, they're going to buy the whole property lot, but they don't say anything about maintaining the property behind it, which is another big sand hill. Um, how, who's going to uh, take care of that property behind that to maintain it to some sort of standard or keep it from being a um, junk heap? So, and then, you know, I've got other concerns about safety and things like that, but I guess we're not allowed to address those. So, and the traffic, if you look at the, they have two exits to that building, but if you look at the distance between, between those exits from that building or entrances, it's not very far. The only difference, that frontage road, it goes nowhere, it but back ends. to Foster, it dead ends. So you've got two of them entering on the Foster Road only, and they're only probably, what, about, I don't know, Two, two, three hundred feet apart. Okay. So that would be a concern for that much traffic. Mr. Burke, all... uh, thank you so much. I appreciate your comments, sir. Um, our next speaker will be uh, John Anaya to be followed by Jose Ortiz. Yeah, the only uh, things I wanted to mention were, um, like everybody's mentioned, the height. It's uh, a lot higher than anything around. So I would think that uh, if they're asking for uh, an approval to go higher than they're allowed, I think that should be denied. Uh, I like the idea of putting the staircase in the rear of the building so that we don't have to see it. Uh, I know it's coming in anyway. Um, you guys had mentioned a sound wall on the freeway that uh, Caltrans had disallowed that in the past. I think they should review that to make sure that they would still disallow it. Otherwise, put that in because uh, I live near the freeway and you get a lot of freeway noise and that would uh, block some of the view from the people on the freeway having to see this. So uh, those are the couple things I wanted to mention. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jose Ortiz will be our next speaker to be followed by uh, Laura Ruiz. Hi, this is Jose Ortiz, and um, yeah, the height of the building is going to really block the views. Um, like just like John just said, there's nothing like that around here. Uh, maybe it should be across the freeway, but also the impact of the foundation that you'll be building this massive uh, complex there is it going to affect our foundation and our structure from you know compacting the ground there, and that's going to affect. We hear some of these big semis going down the freeway and. We feel it, it shakes our house. I mean, it feels like an earthquake. So what's it gonna do to our foundation when you guys start building on this? And that's what I have. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Our next speaker will be Laura uh, Ruiz to be followed by Lynetta Zuzo. Hello. Um, my husband and I just bought a property on Hilltop. It's our first home, so pretty disappointed that this is happening. Um, I have a few concerns that are probably not going to be addressed because of the whole SB35 thing, but I'm concerned that our property values are going to drop because of this, because who wants to live next to that? Um, I'm concerned about the erosion. If you go and look in our backyard, um, I mean, you can witness how the erosion happens in this area. 
So be very careful, um, concerned about privacy. And I've already witnessed issues in the neighborhood between um, the apartment complex and homeowners. I've seen quite a few arguments about parking when renters park um, on Hilltop. I've actually seen the cops called a couple times already, and I can't imagine what 58 more units is going to bring. So, um, and then I wanted to make a comment on the person who said we're at the wrong meeting. The only meeting I was told about is this one. So I would like to know who I can call. Uh, Ms. Ruiz, I believe that um, the planner, um, Ms. Ruiz, indicated that she would um, provide her contact information, would be willing to speak to people. Okay. So um, That's all Ruiz, I have. Uh, maybe if we can do that towards the end of the meeting. Thank you so much, Ms. Ruiz. I appreciate it. Um, our next speaker will be Lynetta Zuzow to be followed by Michael Dougherty. Yeah. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay, yeah, I'm Lynetta Zuzo. Um, I live in Kentwood States. I live on Morningwood Road. And um, so since we're pretty limited to what we can control out, um, definitely the height of the building, it doesn't fit with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, it, it doesn't fit at all. Also, yeah, the retaining wall, the five foot retaining wall to, to shelter the adjoining neighborhood from three, three story buildings. Um, and I've definitely been ingress and egress into these parking lots like it's been mentioned before. I think it's, you know, you've got to consider the fact that that frontage road, you're, you're, it's being argued that, that, oh, that's one of the exits for this. But all that does is funnel onto Foster Road, which then fun, uh, funnels onto Morning Bridge Road. That's, that's got to be considered. It's, it's just, it's already very bad this traffic is horrible um and then yeah the i would like to know who's going to maintain the structure who, who's going to be managing it is it amg that's going to manage it and if so um the edgewood community also has a private trail that the trailhead is right there on that front of the road and so everyone who lives in this um, complex is going to assume they have access to that trail but our association paid for that trail, and I would like to know if AMG is going to, um, you know, pay the association monthly to help maintain that trail because it is going to be. I don't know how they're going to prevent unauthorized use of our trail in the neighborhood. So, I'm, since this is from the um, notice that we were given, you know, within a week before this meeting. The meeting, the notice said this is our only opportunity to bring up issues. Um, otherwise, after this, we can't. But I think that's why a lot of people are bringing up things that are maybe not part of the architectural purpose of this meeting. But, um, you know, there, there needs to be some sort of venue to, to help us um, deal with these issues that are apparently we have no one to uh, voice our concerns to. So, um, yeah, there needs to be a little more consideration to already establish our residence. Uh, Ms. Suzel, um, your time is up. Did you have any um, parting words? Um, no, I didn't. No, I, I don't think they actually consider maybe we need to be more aware of what the number of homes in this complex is part of the residence. Okay, thank you so much for your comments. I appreciate it. Um, our next speaker will be Michael Dougherty to be followed by Michael Schaff. Mr. Dougherty, go ahead. If you can hear us. Uh, Mr. Dowry, can you hear us? Okay, um, Mr. Dowry, while you're um, resolving your mic issues, maybe we can move on and we'll come back to you. Um, Michael Schaefe to be followed by um, Rosa Maria Anastasia. 
Hi, I'm Michael Schaff. Uh, I live at 1330 East Foster, which is right across the street from uh, the planned development. Um, so I'm going to have the displeasure of having to see this monstrosity every single day. Um, and I, I do want to echo what's been said already that the screening and the retaining wall is not significant enough as planned. I've reviewed the plans thoroughly, um, been given them and, and uh, looked at them and it's, it, it, I agree with what's been said. There's just not enough screening. Uh, you know, I'm going to hear all these cars starting every single morning in the parking lot across. There's just not enough to screen out um, what I'm going to have to look at every time I step outside my door every single day. Um, I am going to implore AMG to, uh, in good faith, reach out to the homeowners association and the owners, especially those that live right next to your establishment um to collaborate with us you know we're all here at this meeting because we're most of us are not uh happy with uh this development and that we've had almost zero input uh and this is the only outlet that we have um so that's why most folks are showing up and talking about things that probably aren't under the jurisdiction of this board but this is the only voice we have and so again i i implore amg as well as the palmerston, palmerston family to please reach out to the community uh, so that we can work and, and solve some of these issues together so that we can coexist. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, our next speaker will be uh, Rosa Maria Anastasia. <laughs> if you. Uh, whenever you're ready. Okay, um, if you're not, uh, maybe uh, we can come back to you. Um, Rosie Rojo to be followed by uh, Victoria. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, go yes. ahead whenever you're ready. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Architectural Board. Um, I, I want to first of all thank uh, Shannon Reese. Uh, she's been wonderful. We've been in contact all week. She's answered a lot of our questions. I'm a, a resident of Edgewood. I live along Morning Bridge. I am also the secretary for the HOA. And so we've been in contact trying to get as much information as possible. Um, I think at this time, I, I, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, it just I echo everything all of the residents have shared, all of the concerns. I appreciate that the board has brought up some um, health and safety issues that do definitely need to be addressed, as well as um, the architectural issues, the issues of the aesthetics, um, the height of the, the, the complex, and um, the lack of parking, and where the parking is located. Um, there's just a lot that needs to um, be addressed, and I realize that this is an SB35 project. I realize that AMG is already um, you know, putting in more parking that they need to and already um, do modifying things um, that really, obviously, they don't they don't need to do. So I appreciate the good faith that I do um, echo Michael Sh uh, Schaaf's comments about um, hopefully we can continue to have that good faith um, uh, relationship with the county and with AMG in the hopes of addressing the other issues that we can't necessarily address uh, at today's meeting. Um, because this is the only opportunity we've had to make comments, and I get, I get, again, I understand the county's limitations, but I do hope that um, AMG operates, continues to operate in good faith, um, so that the quality of life is um, continues to be good. Sorry, my dogs <laughs> continues to be good for not just the existing residents, but also the residents that are going to be moving into the, these affordable housing units. So I. Um, I'll leave it at that. I apologize, but I, I do hope to have a robust conversation with not only um, the county, but with AMG, and, um, and that includes all of the residents that are concerned about this project. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. Uh, Victoria, are you with us? Hi, I'm Victoria. Um, I'm actually part of the architectural team, so I oh, do not have okay. a comment. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so we, I do believe we have a couple of um, speakers that are, are joining us by phone that aren't showing up on the list. If that is you, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and um, just 
uh, if you want to say something, just um, uh, identify yourself for the record and then um, state your comments. Um, and then we'll go back to um, uh, members of the public who are having mic issues. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anyone. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, Bonnie, I think, looks like still does not have her mic attached. Um, Connie, did you want to try again, Connie? Uh, Van Belgum, if you are there, um, provide comments. Uh, no, looks like Connie's still not there. Uh, Gildo, Lule, did you want to try again? Uh, no. Um, Rosa Maria Anastasia, did you want to speak? I did note that we did get a comment from um, Michael Dougherty, who indicated his microphone was not working. He posted a comment in the chat, and I'll just read it for the record. Um, said, microphone not working, concerns with ugliness of huge building, also concerned with potential drainage issues off-site both onto the roadway and drainage swale. Uh, so if we don't have any um, additional speakers, um, I think that would conclude our public comment, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, David. Um, well, if I'll adjust this to the applicant, um, you heard public comment. Uh, one of the things that was brought up was maintenance of the project itself and who would be in charge of that. If you could speak to that uh, briefly, I think, you know, it would be helpful um, for some of the homeowners to contact Shannon, uh, ask her some more questions and, and possibly get some kind of town hall meeting with uh, the applicant and associated homeowners associations. So if you can go ahead and speak to the maintenance of the project, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you, Michael. This is Gene again from AMG. Um, yeah, I, I did take notes on, during the public comment and happy to touch on the maintenance and also kind of the notes that I took and trying to do my best to address everyone's uh, comments. Does that work? That works fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, as the board was saying, um, I think it, I can't remember who on the board was speaking, but the state, yeah, as of recently has continue to pass a lot of laws to help affordable housing get through. And um, we're doing our best to try and work. I mean, we will work in good faith with the neighborhood. We we did speak uh, to Shannon this morning and we'll, we'll reach out, um, you know, to the HOA and kind of start that process to do our best, obviously with the time limits that we have and knowing that the constraints that we have, obviously we have a budget to stick to and, we have to stick to the unit count and we're constrained by that, but we're happy to try and make improvements as necessary to the best of our ability. And we're not trying to, you know, just not communicate. We we have the right, as you noted, to proceed with this project ministerially, and we'll, we, but we will reach out to the neighborhood and try and have a conversation of how we can improve the existing structure. Um, as related to the height, um, you know, I think the height limit for this zone is 40 feet, and so we're asking for the four feet above that, and we'll do our best to push that tower element in the front to the back so it's not seen. So we'll work on that with our architectural team. So, I mean, going back, to, that is a high, it's a high height limit for the, you know, for this site, and I think Shannon could speak to that. It's probably been in this uh, community plan for quite some time. Um, related to, you know, the height adjacent to the homes to the west. Um, you know, we there is that setback, but you're right that we are closer to that side than other sides. So, I mean, the only way to really mitigate that is to, we could push the building east and, and eliminate like 15 to 20 stalls and do it that way. So, I mean, that's an, a discussion item that we can uh, talk about. Um, the sun does, you know, move to the west, so that is helpful. We don't think we'll be having a shade shadow on you throughout the afternoon. Um, as far as the traffic, um, we're meet, we're, we actually are meeting the, the code for uh, this type of project. Um, the state has been very aggressive 
for some reason on 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 parking this this actual project as permitted by the state as a ministerial SB 35 projects requires zero parking so we are providing uh, approximately one stall for every studio unit and approximately two stalls for the larger units which we we think will will work for this type of project um, the comment regarding the, the fence there is a chain link fence that's correct there we can, we plan on relocating it but we're happy to work with you and, and discuss with when we discuss offline with HOA about that fence but it will need to be re relocated the chain link fence um, there was a comment about the timeline so Shannon mentioned six to twelve months regarding the financing or the the approval um, as far as the timeline for construction these projects we apply for funding that is competitive that we're competing with other low-income housing developers and so it's you know it's always up in the air uh, but we apply for the funding and I would say that process can take anywhere from you know six months to a year and then another six months of plan check and then another two years of construction so that kind of gives you the timeline after the approval process um the moving the parking to the back we did explore that our first very first site plan like i said was on the corner of frontage and foster and i just think that that would really upset quite a few of the neighbors across the street on foster and on the other side that one house of frontage um there's also some front setback requirements front setbacks 20 feet i think we're at 75 uh issues that we would have by pushing the parking to the back and you would also lose the drive aisle to the back and have less stalls. So we just thought it would be more important to have those stalls. Um, can we put in different landscaping? I think absolutely we can put in different landscaping. And even though it's not objective and it's not written down, I think we're happy to work together to screen it as best as we can. You know, obviously being cost sensitive, but we're happy to, we tried to place very large trees in the front along Foster. And we're happy to specify the quantities and the amount of shade, like screening along the west side there. Um, and related, since we're talking about landscaping and maintenance, so the maintenance is like any other project. Uh, as a homeowner, you know, each person is required to maintain their building. If there's any code deficiencies, we would be cited by the county. But all of our projects, we hire a professional kind of third party management company and they're required to you know get monitor everything from parking to tenants to qualifying tenants to making sure the rent to making sure that the building's up to code meeting safety standards the maintenance as far as the landscaping cleanliness that's all obviously required by us the owner and the third party management company would hire a professional third party landscaping company as we do in all of our projects and they would monitor that and, and maintain the landscaping surrounding. Um, there was also a comment regarding the area in the back as far as, you know, how that would be handled. I mean, right now, I think it, the vacant lot has been there for quite some time. So I'm not sure how the code requires us to handle the dirt behind the child care facility. So I, I whatever it is we'll, we will comply with with any any laws that are required to do so but there is you know as far as drainage goes there's very strict in all areas of california now that you have to treat contain and treat all storm drainage on your property now so it's, it's very strict in that nature and so our civil engineer will make sure and obviously the county will ensure that we comply with those standards um talk about the, there is a talk about the soil um and the type of soil and any issues regarding the soil uh we will obviously hire a geotechnical engineer that will do borings on the site to take care of the site as far as do a report and analyze any subsurface soils and if there's any deficiencies or anything to the soil that is unable to be built we would obviously have to mitigate that um, and I can't speak to that, but if there is sandy soil, sometimes we do have to do deep in piers um, below the footing 
and below the foundation to make it work. So that will obviously be required to design the structural elements of this project and to proceed through the permit process in the County of Santa Barbara. Um, Um, the construction methods, I think there was a concern regarding ground shaking. Um, I'm sure the county will issue specific conditions of, of approval to this project that we have to comply with all of the construction methods on this process that are required. Sound, there's a lot of requirements related to sound now and construction hours of when you, when you can and can't start construction and when we can work on the project. So we will have to meet all the you know code standards in related to construction mitigation. Um, there's a concern about you know uh, someone there you know you just bought a home and congratulations um, in this project devaluing your home you know we we take pride in our projects and we I, I understand that you think it's large and it is you know so it is larger com in comparison to the neighborhood but homes. But there is a lot of evidence out there, and there's been a lot of studies that you can go through and Google regarding projects, multifamily projects, even low-income housing projects near neighborhoods, and how it does not devalue home prices. So I, I urge you to go out there and look for those reports. And I'll do, you know, we'll look internally too, because I have seen them out there. And over the years, we've been, I've been doing this since 2005, so uh, that that comment has come up. So I urge you to look for those reports. Um, I think it was Lynetta. I, I had a hard time hearing you, your phone for some reason. So when we connect offline with the HOA, I'm happy to go through. I, it did sound like you're talking about some of the kind of overlapping concerns of the other neighbors. So I did have a hard time hearing you. Um, and then Michael across the street, the, you know, we'll, we will reach out and, and do our best to work in good faith on this. And that's, that's pretty much the, majority of the comments that I wrote down and I think I captured most of them. I appreciate you taking notes on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, David. Yes, sir. How, how do we proceed now? Uh, well, I think that um, I leave that to the, the planner. I think this was only here for a concept review um or just comments i don't think there's anything left to do other than um i know that shannon indicated that she was going to share her contact information i'm happy to do the same as well if people want that um but i think that's it unless the board members have um any closing comments do the members have any additional comments at this time okay uh, I want to thank everybody uh, who chose to speak on this particular project. Uh, I appreciate the, the applicant and taking notes and uh, addressing it. I hope that as, as a good neighbor that you do reach out to the, the HOAs and, and have your, have your meetings and, you know, get off on a, on a good foot here. I realize that, you know, there's not a whole lot that we can do on this particular project. Um, so I wish I wish everybody good luck on that. Uh, with yeah. that, uh, Michael, I want to add, Michael, I want to add one thing on that note is that uh, you know we are we, our company is working on 15 or so of these ministerial SB 35 applications, and we've had about seven approved thus far. The rest are in planning, and I, I think uh, we want you should the community needs to you know. Thank Shannon and her responsiveness for getting this on the agenda because of all the previous projects that we've gotten approved and all the projects that we're working on through the same process, not one of them has gone in front of the public in any fashion because the timelines are so strict. So I think Shannon is doing a great job as far as getting this on, on the board's agenda in a timely manner because a lot of jurisdictions across the state of California so they just can't meet the timelines and they're just they're, they just can't get an agenda on the agenda in time. This is the second meeting we've had in the sense 
we had an internal meeting with all the departments um, too. So I think Shannon is doing a great job to make sure that the public is aware of this versus our other SP35 projects. You go, girl, Shannon. Uh, well, I appreciate I appreciate those comments, and I'm sure Shannon does as well. Um, well, look at that. Thank you, Shannon. No problem. There is also a um, I set up a project webpage uh, as well on um, the planning and development webpage that'll post timelines as they shift and give status updates. So um, I will. We should have put that link on here as well. But uh, if you email me, I'm happy to share that with everyone as well. And, and uh, I did want to add some clarity to um, what Jean mentioned about drainage is, is very much accurate. Drainage does have to be retained on site. And um, uh, not only that, we have had flood control on Project Clean Water reviewing this project. They provided their first round of comments already. and. Um, you know, they share those concerns and are going to make sure that they're addressed. Um, I see a comment that has asked for um, the information of the AMG as well. I'm not sure if maybe we want to coordinate directly with the HOAs to sort of um, streamline this information, make sure it gets disseminated to the maximum amount of people possible, or how AMG might want to handle that coordination internally. Yes, if, if it's possible, if we could coordinate through Shannon all the comments, and then uh, we prefer to just do it that way and just work through Shannon and, and happy to set up a meeting that way if, if that works. That's great. Thank you. And so, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to note for those who are still with us that um, I have to convert the video, but I will be manually posting this to um, the county's uh, YouTube channel uh, later today for those who want to um, watch or share the, um, the meeting with anybody else. Thank you, David. I want to, uh, again, express my appreciation of the, those who, those residents who uh, hung with us all this time and at least had a chance to speak on on the project a little bit. I, I appreciate uh, Angie's efforts on this. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and close this item on today's agenda. Is there anything else that we need to take care of today? If not, I'll ask for a, a motion to close today's meeting. Yes, so sir. Move. Second. Okay. All Second, in favor? Whatever. Aye. Aye. All right. I mean, bye. Gentlemen, have a good rest of your day, and you too as well. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.